Greetings, I'm Barrent and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today we're going to dig into the Seventh Citadel. We're going to play through a new beginning. This is going to be the introductory scenario for this game. We're going to be playing with two people going through this game. And when we resolve this introductory scenario, we're going to move into a threat and really experience what the whole power and meat of this game is. This game is something I've been looking forward to for a while. I'm a huge fan of the Seventh Continent. If you know I've done two playthroughs of it, you can check them out on my channel. They are fantastic. I loved every minute of it. Also, when I am done with this introductory scenario, Kyle and I are going to decide if we want to do the threat together or if I'm just going to play it on my own. I am going to do a quick setup to show you exactly how to get this game to the table, and then we're going to dig right into it. As I'm playing, don't forget to turn on the Klingon subtitles. If I do notice an error post-launch, I'll make sure to put one there. Or if you find anything, please leave it in the comment section and give me a timestamp, and I'll make sure to put a Klingon subtitle in there so other people that are watching this can learn everything they need to know about the Seventh Citadel through our playthrough together. Now, if you're excited to dig into a new beginning and see how it all unfolds, then I need you to meet me at the table. Our story begins with the collapsing lambs with a fantastic picture over here that looks really cool. During the conflict between the hegemonic city-state of Kel and its rival Galdrock, a new threat emerged from the ground, the Burrowers. The Burrowers, I think that, that actually might have been from the Seventh Continent. I have to go check again. It's been a while since I've played, so I'd have to try to remember that. Under the command of a mysterious master, the enormous worms tirelessly dug out underground tunnels to the point that they caused the collapse of entire regions. Kel and the rebel cities and of its protectorate had no choice but to call a truce and fight the creatures that threatened to engulf them. But the Killian legions, just like the mages of Galdrak and the engineers of the Plains of Mechanism Guild, proved powerless. All seemed lost. A glimmer of hope came from the ancient Druidic clans. They renounced their sacred principles to create. With blood and forbidden incarnations, plant abominations, the only effective rampage against the burrowers. Thus began the reign of the Necro Druids. The War of the Worms has lasted nearly 50 cycles, which is equal to 50 years. One cycle is one year. It sounds like something out of Dune and has irreparable disfigured the world. Despite their best efforts, the Necro Druids and what remains of the Kel Protectorate have been unable to stop the Worm Master, who remains unaccounted for. The collapsing lands, as they are now called, are drowned in a haze of dust thrown up by the burrowers. Plant monstrosities have spread, sometimes out of control, threatening a few surviving communities they were meant to protect. It is in a citadel, each necrodrude seat of power, that you are now exhausting yourself to care for these sacrilegious plant creatures. As a slave gardener, you are waiting for one thing only— Death by accident or exhaustion that will free you from this life of suffering. How long have you been in the Citadel? You have lost track of the cycles. The absence of a door at the entrance to your cell gives you a false sense of freedom within the tower and occasionally leads you to forget that you are nothing more than a prisoner. You wake up to a blight you wake up to a biting cold morning bathed in pale sunlight another long day of hard labor awaiting you at the sacred grove one more day added to your interminable sentence and one less left of your life who knows perhaps this one will be your last suppressing a shudder you think of that apprentice gardener whose silly antics were a welcome source of amusement just yesterday but now his mangled arm, torn from its socket, is fertilizing the plants to which he used to tend. The reckless boy had been cleaning the ground next to Sardonite, mistaking it for Rose Torment, without seeking assistance from a harvester. 
It has been drilled into you that the abominations created by the necrodruids protect the citadel and the remains of the Kel protectorate from the burrowers. The belief is that one day they will help you win the war that has wrought chaos and decimated the once green populous landscape. You have little choice but to place your belief in these stories since you have not seen the outside world since your imprisonment. Hey! Enough daydreaming! The ground trembles and rumbles more than usual. A sudden violent burst throws you to the floor, shaking the citadel of the necrodruid Nindazar to its very foundations. The southeast wall, with its dozens of cells, is torn asunder. Screaming prisoners can be heard over the thunderous collapse as they plummet to their chasm below. Somewhere beyond the clouds of dust and the creaking piles of debris, additional explosions Explosions and streaks of strangely colored lightning flash across the sky. Amidst the acrid smoke burning your eyes and throat, you can see the faint outlines of the other prisoners rushing out of your cell. A shrill ringing fills your ears, and your heart beats so fast that you feel as if it might burst. You have no idea what just happened, but your instincts bellows at you to get out of here as soon as possible. Gritting your teeth, you tense your muscles, ready to run. Welcome to the introductory scenario of The Set in Citadel. At this point, we have to choose what two characters we're going to play. There are four you can choose from, and yes, you can play this from one to four players. And you can truly, truly play this solo. You can play it true solo if you wish to. But like I said, we're going to play two characters just because there's some interactions that I can at least show you when you're playing in a cooperative format. So we're going to play one of our characters is going to be Brooks, and we're going to read a little bit about him, and he's got his own card that we're going to take a look up after I finish reading this. It says... The last person you picked a fight with, Brooks left their cell headfirst over a ledge. Brooks does not make concessions. A savage character developed during formative years spent surviving in the ruins of the city of Mordalar, being forcibly dragged to the citadel by a cohort of purviors has hardly made Brooks docile. Though seven cycles of captivity, Brooks has never lost sight of one singular objective escaping this place. The last attempt was nearly successful, something which would have been the, a first in the Citadel's history. So since we're choosing this character, we're going to take card 175 before the adventure starts, and we're going to take a look at it. Here are the cards to Seven Citadel that are going to be either green or gold-backed when it comes to the actual game when you're playing through it and experiencing. There are other cards as well with different backs, and you'll see some of those as we play. But note that this is one of the just normal cards that comes with it. It says right here, your cellmate fear you, and you own... Your cellmates fear you, and not only because of your temper, something radiates from you, something that even you can feel on occasion without being able to explain it. It is like a strength that occasionally explodes in violent rage. This is probably why at the end of an exhausting day in the garden, you remain more energetic than the others, whose stooped figures and emaciated faces bear the marks of this life of hard labor. So at this point, we are going to turn this card over and see what it says on the other side. It says that I have a dormant strength. So this is going to be an item card that's going to be in our inventory. It doesn't weigh anything, but it does have a red icon that means I cannot get rid of this card. And it does have the keyword quest, so I can't get rid of this card uh, as we play through the game at all because it is one of his quests. Uh, it, and I can't trade this card at all. This is, of course, always going to be just his card here. It says... A childhood memory flashes through your mind. While you were out searching for food, an old building collapsed and a heavy beam fell on your friend Malik. A feeling of panic gripped you, but what you initially thought was fear was actually something quite different. Before the astonished faces of the other children in your gang, you managed to pick up the imposing length of wood, allowing your friend to escape. There's a hidden strength lying dormant within you, begging to be set free. So this states that whenever you have four or more cards with the keyword weakness in your deck or in your hand area or something, you can take a 321 card 
and banish this. So in order for him to complete this quest, we actually have to become weakened in some state. So we'll put this with him. He's going to be able to carry that along with him as we play through it until, of course, we're able to complete this. The other character we're going to play with is going to be Denholm. It says Den to friends and trusted confidants. And since I believe we're, we're going to be friends, probably good confidants, and we're going to call this character Den. It says here, uh, Den was a, still a child when the first citadel was built and no, knew those who had experienced the golden age of Kel. Denom was one of the rare people to have entered the citadel willingly, having seen family, family and friends swallowed up by the ground, claiming their lives of their soulmate and three children, regarded as a fountain of knowledge and wisdom by the gardeners. Denim has become a leader to the community of prisoners, despite not holding the necro druids in the highest esteem. Denim's hatred for the burrowers and their master, whoever they may be, is even greater and provides all the necessary energy needed to endure the daily toils. So since we're going to be choosing this character, we are going to take a card 275 and we're going to place it down and see what it says here. The new inmate recently arrived at the Citadel, and the fool forgot to wear his leather gloves. Scratching himself on the spine of a Belgrant, it took only a few hours for his hand to become completely necrotic. From your bunk, you see him out of the corner of your eye, withering in agony, powerless. His breath is shallow and his face gaunt as, the battles, as he battles the feverish hallucinations. Filled with pity, you decide to offer a few words of comfort. As you approach, you notice a pendant dangling loosely around his sweaty, drenched neck. And take a look at the back side of this card. It says here, Blood Ties. You would recognize that necklace anywhere. Impossible. You gave it to your youngest daughter shortly before she was buried alive. When your village was engulfed by the burrowers interrogating the dying man. He reveals that he had bartered food for this necklace with some former fishermen on the shores of the bottomless sea. Your heart beats wildly. Could your beloved Sene still be alive? You untie the necklace and quickly slip it into your pocket on your apron. The man will not need it where he is going. So we have a Blood Ties quest card that gives me this little necklace. Now, this flag right here, if I remember right, is going to be, if it appears on some of the cards, you can, if you have this, that's going to be able to tell you to go to an actually different card or be able to add numbers to a card to get you to a different card that will have to do with this quest. Now that we've read through the prologue and what we have in store with us for our characters, it's time to create our deck. So the first thing we're going to do is grab the cards that are associated with our characters. You're going to notice up here it says B. B is going to be for Brooks. This is going to be this character's deck right here. And after you get those cards, the 15 that go with that particular character, you're going to be able to choose kind of a little subclass or a something that gives this character a little bonus to certain things. In the book, it gives you four different starting options, but I believe you can choose any five you want to add to it. We read his backstory. He said he was a rather violent individual at times, so we're going to give him these cards that have to do more with uh, strength and stamina. So we're going to add all five of these cards to this deck, and then we're going to shuffle it up so that it's all set to go. We're going to put this card there, shuffle this up, and once this is all nice and shuffled with a good old truffle shuffle here, we'll place this card in these cards into our card holder that is going to become our action deck. And we're going to be able to chew, draw these cards when we need to when we are going to perform some of the actions you're going to see out on the cards. And of course, you'll see how all that works while we play through the game. Once those are built up and I got it in my action deck, we then are going to take our character piece. We'll have this one right here. He is a yellow character, so we're going to have the yellow character here. Then we have our life dial. In this game, life in your your deck is technically your life in a way. What you're going to do is you're going to be discarding these cards as they're being used or as you gain them into your hand and things of this nature in all different ways. As you use the cards, they're going to be discarded or removed. Then you're going to be able to pay your health points. It's one health point brings two cards at random back into your deck so that you'll be able to keep on playing. And so once this goes down to zero, though, and you don't have any cards left you can draw to be able to perform particular actions, then your character has become exhausted. 
And then if there's anybody else still on the table, they can continue playing and maybe get cards back to you somehow through the game or else if everybody is exhausted, that's the end. Unless, of course, you were able to complete whatever quest you're going on, then everybody, then you'd be coming back to, once the game progresses in the next game session, you'd be ready to go. So we'll take these, put them into our slot. We are all set to go with our 20 health. Then, of course, this health is different based on player count. If we were playing true solo for this particular mission, we would have 45. All of that is shown in the preparation phase of the game log here. It tells me everything I need to do to get ready to go for this particular mission. And other quests are going to be, or threats are going to have a similar setup. Moving over to Den, we have done the same thing. We have our 15 action cards right here and ready to go. And then we're going to have to add five cards to this deck. This person sounded like they've been around, they've seen a lot of things. So I'm going to grab the leadership cards that have to do with it. And we're going to give this deck a truffle shuffle and get it all set, put it in the uh, holder, and we'll be ready to go. The two that I decided not to use was going to be the Arcane and Knowledge decks and also the Destiny or dexterity and cunning decks. This is the arcane one and this is the, or this is the arcane and this is the dexterity one. We have decided to grab our leadership and support deck and put it into here. So it's kind of cool that you can kind of add those five extra cards to make each character a little bit unique. Not only that, the 15 action cards we have in there are unique to Den. The other ones that are for Brooks are unique to Brooks. There, of course, may be some overlap in certain areas, but they are kind of a deck built for that character to be kind of represent how that character works in the game. With our setup complete, yep, that's it. One thing that's really cool about the Seventh Citadel and the Seventh Continent in itself is setup and takedown is really fast. It's really quick and easy to get this game to the table. I got our two characters ready just like that, and now we're going to grab our first card. It tells us to start this adventure. We are going to grab card 10. But before we do that, we get to grab two cards from our action deck for each of our characters, and these are going to be our starting hands. So we're going to be able to draw two cards for Brooks. Brooks' two cards are going to be weak point and endurance. So these are the cards he's going to have in his hand that he can play out when performing certain actions or hopefully gaining benefits. So for example, whenever we're doing any of these type of actions, we can choose to not draw three cards, meaning that we don't have to spend a lot of energy to be able to do some of these actions because we have so much endurance. Uh, then the other one is weak point. Whenever we're doing one of these actions, like a fight action, any of these two symbols found on our cards that we decide to use, when it comes to a chain attack or a chain, what do you call it? action, a chain action, you're going to be able to increase the amount of cards you can put into the chain by one. When it comes to chain action, no matter how many cards you draw to see if you have the right amount of successes, which are based on these stars, and you'll see how that works in the playthrough, then you're going to be able to, you can only add that many cards. So say it at a chain value of two. If I draw eight cards, I could still only use two to see if we were able to complete the action, where this would give us an extra one if we had the two uh, uh, strength symbols up in the corner and we were doing that particular action. On top of that, right here, shows that we get to add one of the drawn cards to our hand, just like these, so we're gonna be able to use those actions that those cards have as well. We'll put those aside for Brooks, and grab two cards for Den. Den has Vigilance and Resolution. For this one, I can, any type of egg brown action, I am able to take two question marks and turn them into two shields which means that if I am being attacked by something, I would be able to soak up some of that damage. Then notice this, it does say block this. That means this card is not gonna go back into the discard pile. It's gonna go into an extra area that's gonna have blocked cards. And there may be other cards that are gonna be able to give you get your block cards out of there, but you can't use your life points to bring these cards back to your hand or to your deck. You're gonna to have to find another way to get this card back to your deck. And the same with this resolution. If I decide to use this card, I can turn two of these symbols into a star and I can, or success, and I can do that a maximum of two times. So if I had like four total flags in the amount of cards I draw, that's gonna give me two more successes. But again, we're gonna to have to block that card. So those are the two that she is, or yeah, she is going to have. And of course we have the two for Brooks. Now we have card 10. Let's make sure we get this in the right order and read what it says, because it's time to start the Seventh Citadel. Your cell measures barely 15 feet across. Your cellmates are shoving each other to get out before the upper floor collapses into your cell. On the other side, the room opens into the void and to the chaos of the garden below. A definitive way out for your fellow inmates whose exhaustion and despair have driven them to end it all. 
So some of our cards that we're gonna be drawing and putting out on the thing will have some cool flavor text and kind of unfold the story in front of you. We're then going to reveal our card, which is gonna have a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> You're going to see some amazing artwork that is going to eventually kind of match up making this cool looking map as you go forward. We're going to place our two characters out on here. It doesn't matter where you place them on the map. And then we're going to be able to now choose actions to do on this card based on these symbols here. And we're going to try to do, we're going to draw cards, gain, get successes in order to uh, reveal the cards that go along with this. Again, you can do actions in any order. I could have Brooks do all three of these. I could have Den do all three of these. Or I could split it up and kind of go back and forth. The way I try to play this game is I do kind of go back and forth with our characters so they can all give a shot and do some fun things. The three different actions we see on this card is we see the go find, uh, go see and visit action. We have the search or spot type action. And then we have the, or observe I should say, then we have the search action as well. So I think since this person is closest, we're gonna have Brooke start by going to search this area here. Now in order to do that, we have to draw zero plus cards and we need to get zero successes in order to reveal card 14. Now, since I don't have to draw anything, I'm not going to. Of course, I could choose to, but that will use some of my energy up because the cards are potentially your energy in this game. So I don't want to do that. So we're going to check out card 14. Now, when you go to draw a card, you're going to pull the number that it says to draw. So we have to draw number 14. So we're going to look through here until we find 14. We have found card number 14. If there was more than uh, there was more 14 cards than we had, we'd have to look for specific things. For example, the first thing we'd have to look for is something like this. I, I may have mis-explained exactly how this works. This is potentially one of the quest cards. So if this card had that particular symbol on it, there was like three, four. 14s and one of them had this symbol, we would pick that particular card because that would be going with that quest we're working on. This does not have anything like that. Also, if there's more than one 14 card, we would shuffle them up and pick one at random unless it's the last one, unless there's a gold one. See how some of them are gold. If you're drawing, say, oh, there's, say there's two 15 cards, you would draw the green one first and if that one got removed and it told you to draw another 15 card, you would draw the gold one. The gold one's always drawn last when it comes to the amount of cards that you have in there that could potentially be drawn. So here we have card 14. It says, another tremor violently shakes the citadel, bringing dirt and debris crashing down from the ceiling. The air is thick with dust, but you can make out a body buried under the rubble, grunting with effort. You manage to pull it free. You recognize Taya, an available girl who has shared yourself for several cycles. She is unconscious, her brown hair thick with blood from a nasty gash on her forehead. Bending over her, you can hear the faint sounds of her breathing. So we'll put this out on the board. Here's the card from the back. It says, the prisoners fled without a second thought. Will you carry Taya away to safety or leave her to a gruesome fate? So here, I'm gonna have to have Two, I'm gonna have to have two, uh, I'm gonna have to draw two cards. I have to have zero successes. And at this point, if you're able to complete this action, you gently lift her unconscious body and hoist her over your shoulders. She is pretty heavy. I can add one of the cards that I drew to my hand and I take an 11 card and then I banish this. So there's different ways to get rid of cards. One of them is to banish cards, which means they're gone forever. The other way is to discard cards and those are gonna go into a place called the past. Also, if you notice right here, it shows that we had done that search action and it has this arrow here, meaning it's gonna point at this card and it's gonna stay out there, of course, until we decide to move on from here or save our game, we'll get rid of the card. But for now, it's gonna stay out there and I have to decide if I want to take advantage of that. But before we do, let's check out some more stuff on this card. It doesn't hurt to kind of check out everything you got and then decide what you wanna do. So we're gonna go down here and Den is going to check out card number 15. Here's card number 15. It states, dozens of prisoners run past your cell. You are about to run after them when a terrible crash deafens you. Tons of stones have dropped from the corridor, filling the space with thick, billowing dust. Wailing and cries for help echo through the corridor. So we'll flip it over and see what we have found. Here it says, will you rush out of your cell after your fellow inmates, no matter what happens, you swear you will never set foot in here again. So I'm gonna discard this, replace it with a 15 card. Each involved character moves their figure onto it. So this looks like it might be a way out. So we're gonna put it against that card right there, just like that. 
And the last one we have is down here. It's number 12. Let's take a look at that, and we're going to have Brooks do that. Here's our number 12. You walk to the back of the cell and stand at the ledge above the void. In the center of the garden, a gust of wind nearly makes you lose your balance. Looking up at the speechless, you are speechless at the scene unfolding before your eyes. A gaping hole has been torn in the wall of the citadel, which is now gutted. Here is the other side. You are shocked by the terrible sight, but the sparkle, the spark of hope awakens in you. Freedom, you finally seem, it finally seems within reach as long as you can escape this place in one piece. Mainly after it is revealed, if the involved character has the, a card with the keyword cumbersome, take 17. Otherwise, take number 19, or 99, sorry, card number 99. Now, I haven't mentioned this before, but there are different kind of cards. This is a terrain card. And these are called permanent events that we have out on the board. Now, I don't have anything that says cumbersome in me, with me, so I'm going to take that card 99. Now, as you can see, there are multiple number 99, so we're going to give them a quick little truffle shuffle here. And we're going to draw one of these at random and see which one we have found. We have found ourselves Hope Reborn. At any time, you may block this and all of your other Hope Reborn cards so that your characters share 10 life. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I could also use this as an action. I can choose to use zero, draw zero cards, have zero and get zero successes. And it says the fruits of your action are beginning to be felt in the world around you and in yourself. Check one symbol on your destiny page of the Citadel leaflet and apply its effects. Then block this slipping it underneath one player's character card. All right, so that's fantastic. I've got Hope Reborn, and this is considered a quest card. And that card kind of becomes a community card. It's going to be stored behind this quest symbol, this quest deck here, but I'm just put it on top of it. And at any time, not oh, Brooks is the one who found it. But that doesn't mean that Den can't use this if we need to. So we'll set that into our quest pile of cards. At this time, I'm actually going to have Brooks go again. Again, like I said, we could choose any order we want to. I'm going to have Brooks return over to here since we've kind of resolved this card. And this one says that I have to have all my characters on it and we're going to discard this. Let's take a look. Let's take do this action here so that we can hopefully deal with this poor character up here. I mean, after all, we can't leave without Taya. This particular action, I am going to have to draw two cards from my action deck in order to spend the energy to deal with this problem here. I need zero successes though, so it's not really anything too big. I could choose to draw more if I wish to, to try to do this. And I know I've just kind of been drawing cards and doing things. There is a whole list of things you should go through when determining how something, how your whole action is going to be played out. But I'm going to save that till we have something that's really got a lot of things going on to explain all the different parts of a full turn of when you're doing this. But just know there's a draw step, there's a gear up step, a result step, and a consequence step. They actually, the gear up step is first, then you would draw. So gearing up, well, I'm going to explain now. When you go to do an action, you're going to choose to gear up, which means you can use any of the item cards you have, as long as they don't have the same keyword as another one you're planning to use. You could also then use any of your action cards you have in your hand. For example, say this had this symbol here, and I could have, in this run, it matches that symbol there. I could choose to use this this card to use its effect. I could gear up with this card if I wish to. Then once that's done, I'm going to draw the allotted cards that I have to and place them out on the table. Then at this time, I can choose to draw any more of my action cards if I wish to to try to make me myself get successes. For example, if this needed five, two is not going to do it. There's no way I'm getting five successes with two cards. So I might want to draw more even though I only have to draw two. Of course, then we'll flip them over. We'll see what we get. Now, of course, we need zero successes. But at this point, we're going to try to match up stars. So we'd match them in this way. We would have two successes here from for whatever action we are trying to perform. Also, you may see symbols on these cards, which could activate certain things that are found in some of the action cards that you might wish to play. All right. So here's the two we have that we drew. And that's all we had to do. We had zero successes. We were able to succeed. I'm now able to take one of these into my hand and put it with the other cards I have. I'm going to grab this one and put it into my hand. It's called Consider. I can put two cards into my, after I believe the resolution of the, of the action step and moving into the, con, the result step, I could then choose to use this card to give myself two of those cards into my hand. But there is a limit to the amount of cards you can have in your hand based on your player count. And since we're playing with two players, I can only ever have three cards in my hand at any time. So I 
I have my three cards now. I don't want to play this card to try to get me more cards. And I can also only carry up to seven weight in my in my, on my character as well. Now this card, of course, doesn't weigh anything. It is that quest card we have, even though it does. It is considered kind of a uh, item card. But for completing this, I'm going to banish this card by placing it behind our banished card deck. I normally just put them on top of it, and then when we save the game, I then will, these are going to be considered banished. I'll put it behind the thing so we can never see it. Like I said, this will not come back again until I believe you have finished the threat that you're on. Then anything be in the banished section comes back. I could be wrong about that. We're going to draw card 11 because we have banished that card and we were able to succeed and see what is in store for our character here. Card number 11 states, you grit your teeth as the body over your shoulder grows even heavier and your arms begins to spasm. If only you could be sure that Taya would survive her wounds. Rocks smash on the floor, sending fragments flying across the room. It's high time you make a run for it. So I'll flip this over. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> your body aches with fatigue. So notice this one does actually weigh something. It costs three. So it does have lingering effects here. It says during the consequence step, negative two cards when I'm doing a move action here or if I were doing a run flee action I believe this is a move or backtrack action when you become unconscious discard or block this banish this when you become unconscious discard or block this banish this okay so I could just discard this and then I'll just banish it because Taya would be dead but I'm going to put this with the rest of my items for now that's going to be three of my seven weight that I can carry on Brooks. And finally, I'll place this into my discard pile right there. These are super cool. This came with the All-In Kickstarter Pledge. If you're interested in seeing what comes with the All-In Kickstarter Pledge, I did do a video showing all that. This is where you'd put your discard pile. Now, if you needed to block something, you could just slide it right back there. That card is now blocked. Which is pretty cool that they do that. All right, that's it. Let's move on to the rest of the game. We'll have Dem go next. Den's going to use 15, which is right here. I'm going to have to pay one action card. I'm going to draw that card and flip it over. This card is just going to go straight into our discard pile, but at least we get a chance of looking at what it is before it goes there, decide if it's something we might want to spend our life total to get back in really soon. But I don't know my deck well enough to know if that's a really good card or not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe as we play more, I'll know. At this time, I'm going to discard and replace this with a 15 card, and each involved character will move their figure onto it. Now, that 15 card that we have, the there are no more green 15 cards, only a gold 15 card. So that is the one we're going to do. And this does say discard. So when you discard something, it does not go into the banish section. It will go into the past. So I'm going to place that into the past because that is kind of our considered our discard area. We'll take card number 15. It says, you enter the corridor that runs along the cells of the upper floor. The ceiling has collapsed on the north side, forever sealing access to that part of the citadel. Breaking heavily, or breathing heavily, sorry, with your eyes watering from the thick dust. You make your way forward. So at this point, we're going to flip it over. And we have a new terrain card right here. And it did say we're just supposed to place our characters onto that terrain card. And notice how the like art is beginning to match up. I think this is one of the coolest parts of this game. So we do now have new things going on on this card. The first thing you're going to notice is we do have another search action we can do right here. It's not going to cost us anything. The other thing we have to notice is that if we try to do the move or backtrack action from this card, it's going to be at plus one energy. So we'll probably have to pay more energy to be able to move around now inside this citadel from this card because it's all banged up. Now also, I need to place out some of these exploration cards. We're going to give these a little truffle shuffle here so that they're all set to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to place those down on any place that has a, a little symbol here that is going to match the card type up here. What that does, it kind of thematically makes the game evolve. So if you're in like say a jungle area, then the cards it's going to be telling you to take could be like, let's say a Roman numeral five. And so all those five, those ones that have to do with fives would kind of be thematic to like a jungle type area. It's really cool. It kind of keeps the game very uh, alive and uh, as you go through the game. The other thing I have to do is I have to move this guy back. He was not involved in that action. It says that every character that was involved with this moves the figure to onto this card. So this is the only character that was involved with that action. So at this point, if he wants to move over to this card, he can. And all of the characters have this ability right here. 
I can negative one if you move to a terrain card where there's another character figure. So it would cost me one less to move over to that area. But remember, we have this going on as well, where I'm going to have to, during a consequence step, discard two cards uh, when it comes to, or, or sorry, uh, discard two cards during the consequence step when trying to deal with moving around. So we'll move Brick, Brooks over to that particular card there so we can help out over on that side. And so Brooks would normally draw one card with zero stars and be able to put that card into his hand to move my figure to an adjacent terrain card as long as you do not exceed your max carried weight. And I don't right now, though I do, I'm able to take advantage of this, so I have negative one to my to move to a train card where there's another character figure. But like I said earlier, I'm gonna to have to discard two cards. I don't even get to, I mean, I don't even have anything to do with these two cards. It's just gonna be discard, vigilance, and jack of all trades right into my discard pile because I have this thing going on right here. Now, at some point we may <laughs> think about dropping that because it's not doing us any good. Now at this point, there's two different ways we can go. We have two different ways on these cards. They're both pathfind actions that are going to be zero cards that we have to draw, and we need zero successes, so they are free to kind of look at. But on the back of this card, there could be something that we that we might have to deal with. There could be maybe an enemy in in this area. There could be an item that we find on the ground. We never know what could be on this card. But once that's resolved, most of the time you're going to place down the card that is next to this exploration card. So we're going to have Dem. Go ahead and take a look at what's over here. We're going to do the Bathfind card for that character. We have found ourselves Damnation and Dark Squash. Stands right in the middle of a passage. It has spat its deadly seeds all over the place. It would be best to avoid stepping on any of them if you wish, if you value your feet. Count how many seeds lay on the ground. Take the corresponding card. If you do not take the right card, you step on a seat and it explodes upon contact. Take two damage and a zero three card. This is the hashtag uh, thumbs up will be visible on the back of the right card. So we have to count how many of these seeds are on the ground. I see three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. The only one I'm worried about is this one right here. I believe it's on the ground, which does give us a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Let's see how we do. Now also notice up here, this means that this gray card will turn into a green card. And the other symbol you see right up here means that that is going to be a temporary uh, event that must be resolved immediately, which is why I have to do this right now. Let's check out card 21 and see if we're right. Looking at card number 21, we do see the back has a hashtag thumbs up symbol, so we were correct. So we are going to take card 21, and we have found ourselves, you pick your way through the seeds, making sure not to step on one of those explosive traps. After passing through the obstacle course, you breathe a sigh of relief. I can take a 49 card and a 150 card tip. When danger lurks, paying attention to small details is often what distinguishes the living gardener from the comp composited one. <laughs> A composite one. That's pretty awesome. All right, let's get card 49 and a 150. There are multiple 49 cards, so we're going to give these a little truffle shuffle here and grab one of these 49 cards and see what we have found. We have found ourselves a glimmer of hope. When all seems lost, raise the banner of hope and forge ahead through adversity. At any time, you return five glimmer of hope cards to take a 99 card which I believe in, well, not the other 199 card we got was our Hope Reborn card, which is pretty cool. So we can return five Glimmer of Hope to get a 99 card. At any time, I could choose to use this to unblock one card, then I return this back to the box. So instead of discarding anything, it's just going to get returned. So that was awesome. Now we also get card 150. We're going to see what that one is. We have found ourselves, you are focused. Again, this is one I don't have to get rid of. I can't, I can't get rid of it's locked this one is a blessing and it's only temporary it says with your senses on alert you are ready for any any eventuality at any time you may choose to return this to return your your confused card so if you ever get confused i can return this to get rid of that that's not bad 
And also I could choose to use this to uh, choose one card from your discard pile and or your action deck and add it to my hand. Then the selected return this. Once it's selected, I have to return this. Okay, so we have that. That's pretty awesome. We have a new little item card that's going to be with her. And we found a glimmer of hope. And with these two cards resolved, we'll put them into the pass right over there. And we'll grab our 31 card. It says, the door in front of you leads to the room used to store the gardening tools, which would increase your chances of survival. Every day, the overseer, a tacturum man with a rather with rather odorous breath, distributed the tools to the gardeners and ensured they were all returned in the same condition. So we'll flip it over and see what we found. We found a door. The heavy door is double locked, which is hardly surprising. If prisoners had access to the room, they might use the tools for something other than gardening. This is true. So here's one of those uh, chained actions here. So here's how this is going to work. If I ever decide to use this action, uh, I would have to draw as many cards as I want to, but I can only ever keep two of them that are going to have to try to give me three successes. So in order to do this open, pick, lock, or close action, that's the deal. And if we are uh, if we are successful, the door swings on its hinges. With a creaking sound, I'll banish this and put another 30 card in. Otherwise, the task is tougher than you imagine, and I get to put one of the cards we drew into my hand, which which could be an advantageous because then maybe I could use that to then uh, help in the future. Maybe I'll find one that actually gives me the ability to help against those type of actions. Now, sadly, where I sit right now, I think it's going to be awfully hard to try to get three stars out of two cards, and none of my characters are able to use that particular... I don't have anything that helps me with that particular action. So instead, we're going to have Brooks do this Pathfind action. Now, the Pathfind action is not on that unconscious Taya card, so I don't have to get rid of the two cards. I'm just going to flip this over. We're going to see what has befallen our friend here. We have another rumbling shakes the building. The ceiling begins to crumble, and debris rains down around you. During the following action, the active player is whoever revealed this. Okay, and with a series of agile bounds, you manage to scamper away to safety, or I'm going to take a thunk of rock on the head. Okay, so here's the deal. I need to get two successes in order to be able to succeed at this. I don't have anything that's going to help me with this dodge action at all. So, Or I could just suffer the consequence of one damage, which is equal to two cards. Because every, dam every time I take a damage, or I didn't say it, whenever I decide to do the recovery action, for every uh, point I decide to take, I can put two cards randomly back into my action deck. So what I'm thinking is I'm actually going to take the bonk on the head because it's just going to give me one damage as opposed to me drawing two and hoping for a success. And then if I fail, I still take the one damage. And if I draw any more than two cards... Eh, math says that that's actually not the best plan. So <laughs> I'm just going to take the bonk on the head. We're going to put this into the past. I'm going to go down to 19 health on this particular character here. This is going to be Brooks. Brooks is going to go down to 19, which isn't the end of the world. And we're going to place out card number 19. That card states, you make your way down the corridor, leaning against the walls to avoid collapsing on each new tremor. It is as if you knew no every slab, having walked these halls for far too many cycles, at dawn to the garden and to the and at nightfall exhausted back to your cell. Strangely, you feel a mix of worry and relief as you walk through this familiar setting. By the end of the day, there will likely be nothing left in this place. All right, I'll turn the page, or turn the page, <laughs> unveil the card. So it looks like we do have another explore action over here, go see visit, sorry, for that is going to be 36. And then we have another fog of war, sorry, exploration card that's going to be going down here. As the board grows, I'm going to have to have to expand it a little bit so everybody can see everything that's going on. All right, so put that down there. Now, in order to get down here, of course, I have to do the walk action. It's not just I reveal that and move on to the tile. There is one more place we haven't gone. That is over here. I'm going to have Den go check out number 18. The card says, the, A gardener lies face down on the floor moaning as he attempts to pull himself free from the rocks 
that have crushed his legs, leaving him in torturous agony. Well, that can't be good. It says the man stretches out his scrawny arm to your direction, giving you a pleadful look. Oh, that makes me kind of sad. Now, again, we have another one of those chain. I'm not going to be able to do any of these. You somehow manage to heave the block of stone off the man's leg, banishes in greed 27. So this is going to be a dialogue. If I fail, you lack the strength to pull the man to safety, uh, which uh, which the poor guy here says he probably dies here. Poor wretch. In any case, you try to convince yourself that it was long, he was not long for the world. Yeah, I, I, okay. And I get to, <laughs> I take a zero one card. And also, I am going to have to deal with, uh, I get to at least put a card with me. Now, that's going to go right up here on top. I'm just a little bit off screen. I apologize. But it's going to be on top of that card because the arrow for the permanent event does point down like that. All right. Right up there it goes. So from where we stand, I don't really want to leave this area until I can at least deal with something up here. Because once I start moving away from this, it's going to cost a lot to move out. I do have this card right here. Choose one card from your discard pile and or action deck and add it to your hand. I could do that if I wanted to during as I'm trying to do some of these things, uh, which might be able to help me get through these doors and things of, of such. Attempting this particular action over here would allow me to at least put another card into my hand if I wanted to. And then I could use this while I'm attempting to do this action. Since this is any action, this doesn't have an actual particular action you have to use. It's used for any action you want to do. Now to perform this action, I have to take two cards. I could choose to take more if I want to, but I do need three successes. Though it doesn't matter how many cards I'm able to pull, as since it's a chained action, I'm only able to keep two of them to try to get the three successes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to use this card as well. I'm gonna add this to this in order to help me out in this particular action. And this is gonna be able to choose one card from my discard pile and or action deck and add it to my hand. So I'm going to do that and see what we get. So during my gear up step, which is the first thing you do when attempting to resolve an action, which is why I'm going to go really in depth to it now, because I'm doing a lot of things involving this action, as opposed to one with just no cards and things just happen. So the first thing you do is gear up. So you're going to choose any of your gear cards you wish to use, any of your purse cards, I guess you could say. Then you're going to be able to, I should say, you can only use ones that don't have the same keywords down here. So this one has blessing and temporary. So if I another like temporary card in my hand I couldn't be adding it to this because I've already added one gear with the temporary keyword now since this is a selected card I'm gonna be able to choose one card from my discard pile and or action deck and add it to my hand so I'm gonna do that right now we're gonna go through our action deck and discard pile and see if we can find a good one that might actually help us get through here of the ones from my action deck and discard pile that I think are going to benefit me the most during this action are these two cards right here. The first one is Improvise, which allows me to add an extra card to that. Instead of only being able to use two cards, I will be able to use three cards for this action. The other one is this card right here called Determination. You may discard this only discard this during the gear up step and apply a following effect. Okay, so that has to be used during the, di the gear up step. So I think instead I'm just going to grab this card. We're going to put this one back in my action deck shuffle it up and we'll be ready to go for this action so that has been i've done my gear up step next we're going to draw and now that i know i'm going to really have a chance at this i am going to draw more than just two cards we're going to give our good old deck a truffle shuffle here and we're going to grab a couple more i'm going to grab let's go with four cards and hopefully we can get enough to be able to or maybe we should go with five we're going to go one two three four five because i'd hate to lose this that would be a bad bad sign it's a lot of cards that i'm putting out here but i think that's going to be okay Okay, so we're going to draw our cards and we'll see if we're going to be able to do this. We draw our cards. Now that our cards are drawn, the next step that we are going to do is we are going to reveal the cards and then we'll see if we're able to make this. Okay, this could be a little rough here. I think we're going to be okay. I see two right there, which is going to be probably enough. Here we go. Look at this. I'm going to get three from there. Oh, I got another one right here. That's pretty awesome. So I've got I've got plenty of, 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 of stars here that are going to help me out. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to have to, now that I've drawn, I can choose to apply the effects of my cards. So I'm going to and play my improvise which is going to allow me to use an extra gear card for this would mean or an extra card for this particular thing here and this one right here once i've used it it says to uh, I grab one from the discard pile selected then return this so i'm going to return this to the box in the 150 slot 
And at this point, I'm going to play Improvise, which allows me to grab an, and to use an extra card. So I've got one, two, three stars here. That is enough in order to go through this door here. I'm going to discard all five of these, sadly. There's a lot of cards to just get through that door, but I think it will be worth it. I'm also going to discard the card that we used for that particular action. And now that we've realized that we have three stars, we're going to apply our consequence, which is going to be this white one right here. It says the door swings on the, its hinges with a creaking sound. Banish this and replace it with a 31 card. Now, I apologize. I didn't say who was doing the action, but it is Den who's going to be doing the action. I'm not going to have this guy. With, since he's got this dead weight, poor Taya on him, it's going to be hard for him to move around. So a lot of the stuff I think is going to fall onto her shoulders here uh, when because he He's already got this on the shoulders. All right, we're going to get number 31. It is a gold card. It says you push open the door from the, to the storage room where an earthly damp stench fills the air. Several shadow weeds give off pale light, light blue glow. All right, we're going to remove this one and we're going to put this here. This one does say now I have to banish this card. So this will go into the banish card section, which is right over there. And we have a new place we can go. Now, remember, if I move over to this place, Place, I have to draw an extra card in order to go in there. And I think I'm going to do that. And I wonder if I'm going to have him come with me. I might have him come with me. I think I have a plan. All right. We're going to move over to here. It's going to cost me, I have to draw one card when I make the move action, according to our little card here for our character. But I have to draw an extra card because of this icon here. We're going to have to draw two cards. I do get to keep one of these, which is kind of cool. So we've got Determination and Jack of All Trades. Determination is that one that's going to give me a star. This one is going to be able to give me two question marks. Now, the way the question marks work is that if you've noticed as I've been drawing, some of the cards are going to have symbols up here. And notice some of the cards are going to be able to give us the ability to turn those symbols into things. This one, for example, could turn two flags into successes on any of the cards we choose. So, for example, we did that test that had the chained icons here. I could have, let's say, if I had a couple of the, if say I would have drawn these two cards in during that, I could have used these two flags up here and this card to give myself a success. I would have to discard this card, of course. So the flags are another way of gaining successes in certain instances. And a lot of the times, the five extra cards you chose for your character is going to be give you the ability to gain the chance of getting more of those particular symbols on the cards. So I have either jack of all trades I could keep or I could keep determination. This one's just going to be a straight success. I think we're going to keep determination. Now that does bring my hand size to three for her so she could not gain any more. And at this point, I have to decide if I want him to come with as well. There's a lot of things to do in here and I think he might want to come in as well. We do have a, we have a search action up here or no, I don't, that's a look see, I think it's a spot C search and examine. So I'm going to have him move over here. Because of that, he's going to draw one less card moving over to this particular place because I already have a character there. But I do have to abide by this symbol right here. So I do have to draw one card and I can put this into my hand if I want. It's called Second Wind. I can choose to do a Rest Relax action, I believe is what that is. Of course, I'm going on my seventh content knowledge. This might not be the right thing. I think it's just a Rest action. And I'm able to put three or six if you choose to discard one of the cards from your hand. And then I have to block this. I think I like this one, especially since he's carrying this character with him. I'm going to keep this card, which means that I have to discard something because Brooks already has three cards. He can't have any more. So I have to decide which one of these I don't think I'm going to keep. Well, the funny thing is, is I might be able to get away with this. In order to make this action, I also have to, during the consequence step, discard two cards. And I don't want to do that. Oh, I don't have, yes, I know it's just a move action. I was hoping to discard this to ignore three, but I can't do that. I think I am going to get rid of this consider card. We're going to get rid of that one and we're going to put this one in its place. And now I have to discard two cards as well because of that particular card there. We're just going to throw these in the discard pile. I've got a parry and oh no, there's our determination. That thing's pretty awesome. Oh, but this is a little bit different. Each character does have its own specific deck. Notice his says, this, uh, I can gain one star on an action and block this. Where her determination card gives me either a star or a question mark and I don't have to block it, which is interesting. So everybody has their own sets of cards 
cards that are going to be a little bit different. Now back to this room and also make sure you be aware to keep looking on these tiles because there might be numbers hidden inside these tiles that are going to allow you to draw specific cards that could give you uh, more items or they could give you maybe potentially something bad. Who knows? Uh, so at this point, I am going to have, I'm going to have these all cost nothing, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to have him. Brooks is going to search this area right here and we're going to grab card 30. This card states that in most military fashion, the overseer is a former legionnaire. After all, a few iron tools are organized on a rack. Sieves, baskets, and buckets hang from the wall as well. On the back here, we have spade, hook, rake. You cannot decide which of these tools would be most useful. For nothing, I can take a 39 card, and that card's going to go right above up there. So we have the ability to do a 39 right there. I'm going to have her check out this action here. No, I think actually, why don't we do this? Let's do this card right now since we've got everybody here. So I'm going to have her take a 39 card, and let's see what we get. There are three different 39s, so I'm just going to give them a quick old little truffle shuffle here. We're going to grab one, and she's going to see what she gets. She gets a flail, an architectural tool used for threshing grass, grain, and anyone who might stand in your way. Uh, for and when I make an attack or a strength action, I can uh, draw two less cards, and I can turn three question marks into a success. Select during the consequence steps, roll a die. If I roll a one or two, then I discard this. Okay, so it's not a, it's not going to be a permanent. Well, it is for now, but and it's also a secondary trinket card. So I can't use any secondary trinkets when I choose to use this during the gear up step. Also up here, you notice it has a one. That's the weight it is. So I'm able to take that and I can hold a total of seven weight on this character. And all the characters are the same. So Brooks can also carry up to seven weight. And since there's more cards, why don't we look for more things here? Because notice this does not say to discard this card after you're done. It stays there. So for no cards, and and I can do a take action here, or or handle, take handle, I guess is what it is. I can choose to do it again. Brooks is going to grab one. Why not? I'm shuffle him up, grab another one. He found a hoe, a useful gardening tool for loosening earth and cutting through roots. If sharpened, it can also slice through flesh. Well, that sounds pretty good. During an attack or a dig action, I can, if it's selected during the consequence step roll, okay, I get a success if I do it when I'm trying to do one of these actions. So he's going to take that. That's going to cost him one. Now he already has, he's, that brings him up to four because he's carrying that character that costs three. So at this point, there's only one left. This one could be bad. Sometimes not everything's good. You don't want to sometimes just keep digging through stuff because you might find like this could be a, a bug that bites you or something. But I'm going to do the last one. We're going to have Den do it and see what we get. We have found ourselves, we found an axe. Oh boy. A tool reserved for the harvesting of the citadel. Cutting on a tree is a job for, is a job for anyone. But when the tree starts to hit back, that job for is for the harvesters. All right. Again, this one can be used to help help when having to do a chained action against a fight. I can gain another card or I can use to get rid of, to use, to, I turn two of the fist symbols into uh, two successes. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Um, now, I, I, she will keep that as well. That brings her up to three weight. And I'm going to put this card back up here. There's nothing else we can do there. I, I'm going to have her come down here and search. We're going to go to card 42. It says, several barrels stand against the wall and a number of foul, full hemp sacks lie on the floor. On the card itself, it says, the barrels are empty with a hard shove. You could roll one over and use it as a support. Your attention is drawn to the bags, apparently filled with compost. Strangely, one of them seems to be quivering. Again, I could take this uh, as a 35 card, or if I'm doing a climb action, I can get negative two. Where am I climbing? I don't see any reason to climb on this card. There's nothing to climb. Okay, there's no reason to climb. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a 35 card. I'm going to have her do this again, and this is going to go right below here. So as you can see, again, the game starts looking really cool. It's got all these things connected to the maps. I think this is super neat. We have 35. A, you kick the bag, releasing a centipede the size of your forearm. Oh, boy. Which quickly scuttles off toward the stack of barrels. In one fell swoop, you seize it and slice its head off before it can bite you with its venomous fangs. 
it is still wiggling as you slip it discreetly into your apron pocket. This is the most gross thing I have ever heard of. You would rather not have to share this prize catch with another gardener. I don't know if there's a prize catch. This is absolutely disgusting. Oh my gosh, I'm quivering right now. The, your mouth is watering at the prospect of devouring the snack. I think we will vomit. You involve character may discard this to put five cards into their de uh, ac your, their action deck. Wow, it costs nothing. And oh my gosh, eating yuck! Bleh. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna take it. It doesn't cost anything, which is fantastic. So that's more gear for us. Oh yuck! That's absolutely disgusting. And with that, ugh, I'm gonna have him go over here. This again isn't gonna cost anything. So we're gonna grab card 23 out of the deck here. Now, of course, we could still climb, but I don't know where we're climbing to. All right, let's see what it says here. Uh, a section of the ceiling looks collapsed in the corner of the room. Looking through the opening above your head, you can make out an angular shape of piece of furniture hidden in the shadows of what appears to be a bedroom. Oh, okay, so maybe we climb up here. It says, the opening is too narrow for you to slip into the room on the floor above, but if you try hard enough, you should be able to squeeze your arm through. Oh, here we go. I can do four cards. I need two successes or four cards and four successes. You have the keyword weakness. I do not have weakness. And so we're going to put this here and I think we're going to have Dem do this one because it would cost us cards to do it. And like I said, he is doing a lot of the uh, moving. He has to take a lot of penalties when it's moving. So we're going to have her do this. So her deck is also getting pretty low as well. I think this is going to work out really well. I've got this card here that is going to make it so I have to draw two less cards and already gain a success when I try to do this climb action. So I only have to draw two cards and hope that I'm able to get a couple successes. The deal is now I have to decide if I want to gear up anything. And I don't think there's anything to gear up. So we're just going to draw our two cards. It would normally be four. You would have to draw four. You could draw more with the plus symbol there. This is not a chained action. So any successes I get, I get to keep. So we're going to draw them. And see what we get. Oh, I got a one success right there. And we got two successes total, which is awesome. So we're going to be able to get the two successes we needed to from this card. And I'm all, but I had I also got one from this card and the negative two cards I had to draw. So we were successful, which is sweet. We'll put these in the discard pile and we'll see what our consequence is. It says, your hand touches what appears to be the leg of a reading desk. Feeling around, you find a book that has fallen on the floor. You manage to grab it with your fingertips before stepping down, take a 50 card and banish this. So I'm going to banish this up to here and we're going to get a 50 card. There is an astronomical amount of 50 cards. So we're going to give these a quick old little truffle shuffle here and we're going to draw out one of these 50 cards and see what we get and make sure they're all in the deck there instead of all flying all over the board. There we go. One more little shuffle. There we cut it right here and we'll draw the top card. Let's see what it says. You leaf through the book you have just found. We have found ourselves Flag, flag Lancia. You have been told about this plant. Its smell is dreadful. The taste of its fruit object, yet it is undoubtedly one of the healthiest and most nourishing plants that can be found in the collapsing lands. If you take the following action, you may uh, be on the, and you're on the same terrain card as this particular plant and block one card with the keyword companion. Uh, okay. And I'm able to do a get card and you pick as much fruit as you can carry to replen to replant replant oh replant at the citadel I, if i have one okay these are going to have to do with the uh game itself when it comes to moving forward we're eventually going to be building out a citadel and we're going to be giving ourselves different uh, amounts of things we can add to it so if we decide to go forward i might want to gain more of this production because with this in our quest deck i'm able to if i have one or three you discard a cooking pot uh, uh you if, if, if I gain one or three of these if you discard a cooking pot. So it's going to be able to give us more of those particular, uh, what do you call them, production. We're going to get more production points with this particular card, which seems pretty awesome. If you want to take the following action, you must be on the same terrain card as this plant and block one card with the keyword companion. So I do have to have a companion. So I think what this is kind of simulating is that the person that you're with, with the companion, is actually taking this stuff back to your uh, cit citadel, uh, is how I believe this card is going to 
going to work. But that's a quest card, so I'm going to put that up in the quest items area. Fantastic. We, uh, we've gotten through this area, which makes me happy. And now I have to see, do I have anything that is going to help me try to get through and help this character here? I think I have a plan, and we'll see if it is going to work. <laughs> I am first going to move over here, which allows me, I have to do have to take one card. There isn't that uh, penalty on this tile. So I'm only going to take one card. We'll see what we have. We have found inspiration. Choose one card in your action deck or discard pile and add it to your hand. Oh my gosh, that sounds absolutely amazing. I'm going to get rid of vigilance. I'm going to put that into my discard pile and put this with my three cards that I have. Inspiration sounds absolutely awesome. So Den has inspiration, which she has resolution, and she has a determination card. So she is, she's, she's loaded. This is going to be awesome. Then I'm going to have him move over. He doesn't have to pay, draw the card, but he does have to discard two cards for coming with. So we're going to discard Flight and Blacksmith, which I think are a couple of his... Oh, Blacksmith is one of his like cool cards that are part of his thing. Now we're going to attempt this. I'm going to try to do this card right here. I'm going to have Dem do it, do it here. We're going to have Dem do this. And I have to draw two cards, and I need three successes. So again, I'm going to draw three cards, maybe four. We're going to draw four cards. Hope for the best here. Uh, during my gear up step, though, I am going to use my determination. It does say you may discard this during your gear up step to apply the following results. And I'm going to gain the one success. So we already have one success in doing this. Now, I had to do that during the gear up step, so I can't play it after I see what these cards cards are because that'd be really really good this is it so it's only mostly good all right so we have one okay oh, oh this looks pretty oh no i think we're gonna be okay oh my goodness i was a little worried there for a second there because i only could get like one star now remember this is a chained event so i can only keep two of these cards so to add towards my successes and i've got one two and my determination is going to be three and these two i'm I aren't gonna be able to do anything oh but i could have with those two cards used my resolution card to be able to i'd have to block the this and I would have gained a success if I wished to do that because I have the two tags right there, which is kind of cool. Like how this is all, there's so many different ways to be able to gain successes and stuff. It's really kind of cool. So I'm going to discard all of these. I don't get to keep any of them. Um, and I also had to discard, and I already did discard my determination card. This, then we get to read the consequence. You somehow managed to heave the block of stone off the man's leg. I'm going to banish this and gain card 27. Before I draw any cards, I do want to mention that after I put it in the, pad, the banish, I noticed it wasn't that. It's read 27. Don't grab card 27. There is, you have to make sure, because it, it looks similar to the grabbing cards, but it's not. It's a read. I have to read actually 27, which is right here. I'm done for, but there's hope for you. Fly, you. The wounded man's face twists in pain. His legs have been grounded into jellied pulp of flesh and bone. In his last moments, he finds the strength to thank you with a faint smile before his eyes glaze over and he breathes his final breath. So at this point, I <laughs> am going to have to take a think, or in this case, probably compose action, where I'm not going to have to deal, I don't. I can choose whichever cards I want to, I'm going to choose, maybe let's just grab a couple cards, uh, which it might need, I need one success out of these. Here's our first card, we have half a success, and I'm sure this one in theory should give me the other half of a success, there you go. All right, so we got our one success, which we needed to be able to complete this action. These are going to go in the discard pile, and at this point, I will read the consequence. The only way is forward. Trying your best to remain positive, you think of how the unfortunate wretch is at peace now. I get to take a 49 card and return to the dialogue book. It's not, I guess it's not to the dialogue book. Return the dialogue book, which means close it. Our map has gotten a little bit smaller here since we've been banishing some of the cards, but I'm going to take our 49 cards, give them a truffle shuffle, I get one of these. We'll see, we're going to gain this one right here. It says Glimmer of Hope. I think we've already gotten one of these, or so it's, yeah, Hope Reborn, Glimmer of Hope. So they might, maybe all the 49s are Glimmer of Hope, maybe not, but there's uh, three more uh, that we can potentially gain. Now I think it's time to finally progress forward here. We're going to move on to that space, which means I'm going to have to draw two cards. Dem sits with no cards in her action deck, so she's going to have to do a recovery action. The way this works is you're going to take your life dial, and for every health point you take, you get to put two cards back over there randomly. So it's not a, not a, not a full-fledged deal. But I th And so I think what we're going to do is we are going to tick this down by, let's go with, let's take five points. We're going to go to 15. 15 on here. 
which is going to be able to allow us to put 10 cards back over there, which is half of our deck. So we're going to shuffle this up a little bit and put 10 back in there. All right, let's move this a little bit so I can give this a truffle shuffle without making a big mess here. I probably still make a big mess, but that's okay. We're going to give it a truffle shuffle and be able to put five cards back over to the, or 10, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, back over to this side. And then I'm going to eat my shiny centipede. So at this point, I am going to discard this, which means it'll go into the past. And I'm going to take one, two, three, four, five more, meaning there are still three cards left in my discard pile. And I am at any time able to look at the cards that are in there to decide to help me just kind of once I kind of learn how my deck works I can know if there's a particular card in like say determination was over here I'd know that's over here it's a strong card but it's not which is good it means determination is in there somewhere maybe I'll draw it again now that we've got our new deck, I am going to have to take two cards. I get to keep one of these. We've got Drop Your Guard, and we also have Second Wind. Oh, I like the Second Wind card. Choose three cards from your discard pile and shuffle them back in your action deck. Block this card. I think that's better than... Oh, this could be Ply. Yeah, I'm going to discard that one, and we're going to keep this one because we now are able to gain our third card back. Of course, the person I thought that was going to be running out of action cards is actually doing pretty good. He's going to draw one card, and he can choose to keep this if he wants to. Anticipation. During the consequence step, shuffle one blue card from you have revealed back into your action deck instead of discarding it. And then I discard this. Anticipation. So that could be kind of good. I think I'm just going to discard this for now. I can't think. I, I'm still learning the deck. We'll see what happens. I am going to have him come over here. Brooks is going to check out number 36. There are two 36 cards. So again, give me a little truffle shuffle here. Boom, 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 around, 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 around. We're going to take that one right there and put the other one back in the box. So that does mean if I wanted to, I could do this. I could do this again and I'll find the other card. This says, you prepare to enter the cell when your nose picks up the stench that you know all too well. Your eyes dight around the room just to see for yourself. We have found ourselves, what's this? A branch of a gigantic jack fig tree has fallen into the cell. Several of its fruits have burst on the floor, releasing powerful musky fragrance. You, that makes you nauseous. That's fantastic. As you back out in search of fresher air, the heady smell fills your body and mind with unexpected vitality. Immediately after this is revealed, each character on the active player's terrain card may return the You Are Exhausted card. Well, I don't have that. But also in this particular area, I am able to use this. If I do a fight action, I can, I'm can. i able to gain two more cards, I think. Draw two more cards. Um, but I hopefully don't have to do any fighting. Uh, that is it. That is, that is all we have from this particular card. I'm going to have Brooks again. I'm going to have him check out this card down here and see what he has found. We'll flip it over. He has found himself. The passageway is filled with thick gray clouds of dust thrown up by the falling ru rubble. Your feet scramble unsteadily over the rocks on the floor, slowly your progress and making you check your balance every step. You somehow manage to make your way through the corridor, discard this, you painfully fall flat on your face, discard three cards. I'll barf. Okay, so we have to deal with that particular thing. I'm going to have Dem be the active player next, and Dem is actually going to use Inspiration. Choose one card from your action deck or discard pile and add it to your hand. Discard this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to discard that, and I'm going to grab in determination. This is about to be probably one of the greatest cards of all time. Now, of course, I would have to do this during the gear up step, and I'm going to do that. Let's make sure we get across this. I'm going to play the card during my gear up step. I'm going to draw one card. Now, remember, this is a chained event, so I can only grab one card, and I need one success, which is why I did this, because I automatically get the success from determination, so no matter what this card is, doesn't matter. Oh, I would have made it anyway. But I get to put this into my hand because of this card here. You somehow managed to make your way through the core Order and discard this. I get to gain, put a card into my hand from what we drew. So I'm going to put that one in there. This is going to go into the past. This did, I get discarded and I get to put in a 26 card. The next place we get to go says a strange creature ambles aimlessly in the corridor. You slowly approach it with your palms open, showing that you mean it no harm. Distraught, it waves a piece of wood in your direction, not seeing you back or not seeing you back off. It tries to land a clumsy blow. All right, okay, we have a dude we have to fight. Uh, this, I have to do a combat action, and this is one of the new things in the Seventh Citadel. 
Here's a zoomed in picture of the card so I can explain kind of how this is going to work. Now this is a fight action, so it's going to be different from one of the other actions we did where we needed to have a chained event that we need to get three stars from. Now as you notice, there is a three here. We're going to represent that with our die. We're going to now start using our dice. Our dice are going to represent the amount of successes we need in order to complete this particular goal. Now of course this is a chained event, so I can only keep one card I use for this particular action. But since it's a fight action, the number of success we need is going to tick down on this dice from three to two to one. So for this first card, we only get one success. We'll tick this down to a two, meaning we need to get two successes the next time we try to do this action. In order to complete the action, though, once the successes are done, we're going to go to the consequence step, which is over here. The consequence step, if we do not get the amount of successes we need to clear the die to zero, then we're going to have to do the one on this side that is allowing me to put a card into my my hand, but I'm going to have to discard two cards from my action deck. The other one, once we get our die to zero, we're going to be able to keep the action card, one of the action cards we draw, and we'll be able to move down. Now, since a compound action, we're going to move down to the next one, which is going to be four successes. And again, it's a chained one where I can only use gain two cards. But again, we're going to continue to tick this down. So if, say we get two successes this, for this particular action, we go down to two, but we would have this consequence because we did not complete the entire thing. So we'd take two damage, but we do get to keep a card. Then, of course, once this is all done, we get to banish this and replace it with a 26 card. So let's start. Ahead. Let's go ahead and take care of some of this. Now, before we do that, I have to make sure that when we moved with our character Brooks, I think I forgot to discard the two cards that go along with his actual movement because we are carrying our unconscious character here. So I'm just going to discard our two cards, leaving it with, I think, only about one card left in his stack here. So so we'll have to figure out who we're going to use. Even though Brooks is carrying somebody, we're going to use him to try to complete this action. He's going to do a fight action. He has that hoe. So during the ready up step, I am going to use my hoe. During my fight, I get to get a one, I automatically get one success. Now I'm hoping I can actually pull two successes. We'll see how it goes, but I don't think that's going to be a very likely thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I only have one card left. So we're going to grab the one card and just see if this is going to be able to help us out here. Unless I want to, I think we're going, is there anything? else I can do. Now I have this in my hand, weak point. If I can get two strength, I can actually add one more card to a maximum of two. Now, I think I might do that. Okay. So we're going to do, we're going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to start by using some of my health to put these cards back. We have 19. We're going to go down to 10, bringing 18 cards back over to here. So we're going to mix this up and put 18 cards back over into this deck. We're going to give us a good old truffle shuffle and we can get our determination card back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, it's only 16. We're going to 16. So, in, so instead of uh, 9, I am going to only take 8 damage. So we're going to have 11 left with him. We're going to get, put these all in here as I make a complete huge mess here. <laughs> That's what it's all about here, making a huge mess. All right, give him a truffle shuffle, put them back here, and I'm going to give myself back 1 health, bringing my health total to 11. I think I did my math right. There is a good chance I didn't. And now I'm going to draw three cards. One, two, three. Now I only get to keep one of these for the action, but maybe one of them will have a strength symbol so that we can actually use this card. Let's see what we have. We have found a savior energy. We have found a straight up success and we found a jack of all trades. Now, sadly, I did not get any strength symbols up here, so I'm not going to commit this card. There's no reason to do that. I can't gain the extra bonus for it, but I did get two successes, one for vigilance and one for my host. So I'm going to discard those two cards and we are going to, oh, but I need to keep one. I, I get my two successes. We're going to tick our die down to one. Now, of course, it does say selected during the consequence step, which is right now, we're going to be able to keep one card, but we have to discard two cards from our action deck. I'll have to decide which one of these I want to keep, and then I have to discard these two into my discard pile. We're going to keep Jack of all trades and we're going to discard the other two. And at this point now I have to roll a die. It says during the consequence step, roll a die. If I get a one or two, I have to discard this. So we'll roll this right here. If we don't get a one or two, we got a three. So I get to keep this die. Brooks, I think is going to go in again and try to take this guy out. Notice I only need one to be successful. I'm automatically going to get one success from my hoe. So I'm not going to draw any, I'm only going to draw the one card that I have to draw because of this, but I'm probably not even going to get 
get a success and that's totally fine. I didn't get a success. I got anticipation, which now means I'm going to clear the die, which I now get to keep the card if I want to. And then I have to put down to four over here. Now, sadly, before I get too ahead of myself, I have four cards in my hand because I kept jack of all trades. That can't be. I have to get rid of one of these. I think I'm going to get rid of second wind. That's the card I'm going to get rid of. Now we have a new card that we just got, anticipation. During the consequence step, shuffle one of the cards. No, I'm just going to get rid of that card too. This is, I'm, I'm kind of uh, set up for battle here and we're going to see if we can take this guy out. Now we do have to roll our die and see if we get to keep our hoe or not. We do get to keep the hoe. We got a five. Brooks is going to continue his mutated Stay Puft Marshmallow Man destruction here and try to take this guy out. He needs four successes. We're going to use the hoe again. We're going to bring that into effect as our gear up step, and we're going to see how many cards I can keep. I can keep two, so we're going to grab four. One, two, three, four. We're going to grab four cards, hopefully get some good ones that are going to give us some successes, and I think I have a couple tricks up my sleeve. The first one we have is going to be Flight. That's pretty good. We've got Blacksmith. We have, what else do we have here? Inspiration. And the last one is Intuition. So I get to keep two of these cards. Now I could keep these two, which would give me two successes. I could keep these two giving me two successes, or I could keep those three or those these two to give me one success. I'm going to keep these two cards right here, and I have a plan for this. I'm going to get one success from my hoe. Two successes from here, bringing this down to one. Those are the two successes I'm going to, or the three, one, two, three successes I'm going to keep. Now, I'm going to use Jack of All Trades. Jack of All Trades allows me to gain any symbol I want to this. So I am going to use this to give myself a strength symbol. Then, with the strength symbol, I am going to use one, two, the one from Jack of All Trades, and the one from this card here to give me two strength cards, which allows me to add another card to my chain. So at this point, now I'm just going to add inspiration. And now I have one, two, three, four, which removes the die and we beat him in one shot. And when we can actually put some cards out there, I am going to discard weak point as well. And when I do can finish this, I don't get to keep any of the cards, but I do get to banish this and replace it with a 26. Now, before we do that, again, we have to roll for the hoe and we get to keep the hoe. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Brooks is a powerhouse. Now, of course, that used again almost half his deck to get through this guy. But we were able to defeat the mutated state product Marshmallow Man, and we'll see what this new card holds for us. So let's banish this. The only thing left is a gold 26 card, and it states, in the dim light of the corridor, you inch your way forward. You walk past a half-open door on the west side You can and cannot suppress a shudder of fear. The room beyond it is the chamber of questions, and anyone entering it always confesses their secrets, even if they have none to hide. Enraged howls ring out from the cell across the way. So we'll put our card down, and here we have more of the map, which is pretty awesome. I do have to put down a couple of these exploration cards. We have four exploration cards left. We'll shuffle them up a little bit and put down a couple there and there. At this point, Den is going to move down into this area here and have to use a card to do it. We have found ourselves reinforcements. I can use two of these. Oh my gosh, that's really, really good. I'm totally going to keep that card. And I am going to get rid of her vigilance card. We're now going to clear a path for Brooks. First, we're going to check out over here. We're going to see what this is. We're going to explore this card. We have found ourselves. You are out of breath. Do you continue on as best you can? One random character takes a 0-1, or do you risk taking a few moments to rest? Take a 13 card. Try your luck. If Lady Luck is on your side, I get to add three to my card deck. If you, you jinxed fragments of rock fly everywhere, one of them hits you, lose one life. This particular card is a temporary event. That's this symbol up here, which means I have to deal with it right now. I have no choice. So I have to decide if I want to take a random one card or if I want to test my luck where I can draw a 13 card. The 13 cards are right here. There's six of them. I'm going to guess this is a one in six chance of something going right, but what the heck? We'll give it a shot. We're going to give these a truffle shuffle here so that we can draw one of these up. I'm not sure which one we're going to get. Hopefully it's the good one. We'll take this one right here and see what we have found. It says Lady luck is on your side. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
old what an old cider always says if you escape an encounter with a burrower go to the tavern and play dice or cards while fortune is still smiling so return this so i'm going to return this back to the box with the rest of the 13 cards and this one says if Lady Luck is on your side, I get to add three cards from my discard pile back to my deck. If you are jinxed, Fragments of Rockfall. Okay, I am not jinxed, so I'm going to grab three cards. Well, one's inspiration. And we're going to put those back into my action deck and shuffle them back in there just like that. There we go. All right, we are good to go. Wow, that was really awesome. Lady Luck was on my side. Now, it could be, maybe there's only one bad one. Maybe there's five bad ones. I don't know how many bad ones there are considered equal to how many good ones there are. Now that that is done, I'm going to remove this and put down a number 32. This card states, you have walked past this room a thousand times, but have never entered it yourself. What luck! Those who have experienced it have terrible memories, the sort of that wake them up at night drenched in sweat with eyes wide in horror. Pushing the door open, you take a look inside. The inter interrogation room, an, inter an overturned brazier has spilled out dimly glowing embers all over the floor. An obvious, unconscious, obese giant is slumped against a cupboard close by. A man is imprisoned by stocks around his necks and wrists. So let's take a look at this card. Oh my gosh, this is an absolute torture chamber. They weren't kidding. Okay, so we have a giant of a man over in 22 that we can take a look at. We can search 28 and we could maybe help this guy out in number 37. I will use one of my action cards to go into that space. I have anticipation during the consequence step. Shuffle up to two cards you have revealed back into your action deck instead of discarding them, then discard this. I might keep that card and I'm going to get rid of my reinforcement card and keep anticipation because I might be able, if I start doing things in here, maybe I can use that to put cards back in my action deck. We'll move over there. That was the move action. I probably should have said that. So again, on this tile, I have a search action. I have an examine action up here, searches over here. And then this is a greet action. Let's greet this guy. It costs me no cards and number 37 is going to be pulled. 37 states, the man's head twists in the stocks. You've spent enough time with the other inmates to know this individual is not from the Citadel. His face still bears the mark of his recent interrogation. He stares scornfully at you, his eyes shining with a dark malevolence. Is that a sly smile forming at the corners of his blood-stained mouth? Let's take a look. Here he is. He's got sly smile. Who could he be? Why is he tortured? Was he able to overcome his persecutor? Give this his current situation, he is most likely expecting that you will also be asking him a few questions. So at this point, again, I can talk to him if I wish to. I can speak for no cards to read 49. Let's take a look at that. And of course, the arrow's right here for the permanent event facing up. The mysterious individual speaks before you can open your mouth. Set me free quickly before he wakes up. He urges in a hurried whisper, nodding to the body lying nearby. We're on the same side. And I could, if I choose to free the prisoner, I can read one. Or if you want to wait, I could read 15. Maybe he'll tell me more. Let's wait and see what he says. The man stares at you for several moments. Something has changed in his eyes as he replies to you. Very well. Fair is fair. What do you want from me? Who are you and what are you doing here? I ask. This is an unfortunate misunderstanding. I was delivering a new group of gardeners to the Citadel when they served me up to that rough brute snoozing there. So what do you say, friends? Now, <laughs> uh, I'm afraid that if I keep on choosing to wait, that thing's going to wake up and attack me and I'm not going to have any help from him. I don't know what to do here. Do I free him? Let's choose to wait one more time. See what happens. Listen, we don't have all day. If the Citadel is crumbling, that means the offense launched by the Necro Druids has failed and the Worm Master has found a way past their defenses to finish them off once and for all. The war is lost for your masters and protectors, he sneers. Even if you survive this place, you won't last two days without the protection of the Necro Druids. Unless you help me get out of here, of course. I could be a powerful ally and perhaps even plead your case to the purviers. We are everywhere 
and we only have friends. A crackling sound in the ceiling startles you. There's no more time to lose. At this point, I can free the prisoner with an 04, or if I want to wait to risk longer, 13. I think now is the time to free him. That cracking ceiling doesn't sound too good. Let's go to 4. You undo the fastenings, holding the stocks closed. The prisoner straightens up and cracks his aching neck. Before striding out of your interrogation room, he leers at you and says, You certainly took your time to decide. I'll be sure to remember that. Discard 439 card from the adventure deck without revealing it. Take a 40 card return to the dialogue book. Or sorry, return the dialogue book. So we'll discard 439 without looking at it. Oh, I totally love to see what that is. I also forgot to put that into the past as well. I get card 40, and I do want to mention that I am checking to see if there's multiple cards as I pull every card. If there's not, I don't mention that there's only one card, just so you know. It says, crack. You look up and see a fissure making its way across the ceiling, stopping halfway anxiously. You hold your breath. Huh? False alarm. You can get back to what you were doing, okay? And this one says right here, crack. A fissure suddenly shoots forward, splitting the ceiling in two. You're, a stone block crashes to the floor in front of you, and you have just a few moments before the whole thing collapses. So I'm going to have to, let's see here, okay, we're going to have to deal with this particular card. Didn't expect this to happen. Uh, this is a uh, action that has to be performed right now. And, the, and, and, uh, and any action on the character's active player's terrain card must get involved. So we'll have to try to deal with that. I'm the only one there, so I'm going to have to do that particular action and try to run out of here. <laughs> we'll see if we can run flee fast enough. I can pull up to two cards. I need two successes. I'm going to grab three in hopes that I get enough to not have to deal with this particular thing. Let's see how we do. I was able to get, well, half a success, half a success, and one success. We got one success out of all these because none of these are going to match up. So we only got one success, but we do have good news. I remember I, this is not a chain event, so I can use all of these cards for whatever they are. And I've got two right there. So I can discard, I can use this card that says I am able to, if I have two of these symbols on my card, I can gain a success. So I did get my two successes. I do have to discard that. Oh no, I'm sorry. I have to block this card. To block a card, I'm just going to stick it right back there that shows that that card is blocked. Now, when I go to like get cards back from maybe using my health points and things of that nature, block cards do not come back. You have to find another way to get some of these block cards back. So that's a really powerful card, which is, means it's only able to be used maybe once or twice in Adventure, unless I can get it out of there. Now we'll go to the consequence step. It says, you managed to escape the room before the ceiling gives way, raining down a barrage of rocks where you were standing just seconds before. Banish your train card and replace it with a 32 card. Discard the permanent event cards attached to it. Move each involved character to the adjacent terrain. So I guess that's it. I'm going to guess this place is totally destroyed. I'm going to discard. The, oh, do I banish them? Banish your terrain card, replace it with a 32, and discard permanent event. So I'm going to discard that one, and I'm going to banish this one and it's replaced with the gold card, that it was a close one. As the dust settles, a stone rolls across the floor to your feet. The rubble has almost completely blocked the door to the room, which is now buried under several tons of rock. Anyone who was in there has probably been reduced to pulp. Okay, so there's nothing I can do there if I want to move into here or out of here, I should say. It was going to cost me four extra ones. And then I am going to discard this, I believe. Terrain card permanently attached to this. Figure, yeah, this will just get discarded into the past. And my character goes into this space here. All right, that was something. We're done with that card. Let's check out what's down here. We're going to send her down there again and flip over our card. We have found metal wire. You have picked up a malleable wire that will come in handy. Oh, this would be good for the key lock I had a while ago. And apparently I can also use it uh, if I ever find a place that is going to allow me to do that particular action. But right now I don't have that. But it does doesn't cost anything. It is another uh, card I can put in my stack. So I do have blood ties, flail, axe, and metal wire. Now, as it comes to my keywords, I do have two trinkets. So I cannot use both of those in the same action. And I have two secondaries. So it means I cannot use the axe and the flail in the same action either. So I'll put those to the side. We'll continue on by putting down a 34 card.
This states, you notice people gathering at the far end of the gallery. Several very agitated prisoners are standing at the top of the stairs, leading out to the sacred grove. You overhear a few snippets of conversation. So here we have a, we can go greet these people, or we have an action over here that we must do immediately that is going to have to do with a, uh, it, with the map symbol there, which is a go see and visit action. The other one that I, well, this was a craft repair action, just by the way, in case you're keeping track of kind of what all these different ones do. There is one over here. I'm going to have Brooks go over there. He hasn't done anything in a while. He's going to pull card 43. It states, the savage howls grow louder as you approach the cell. Your instincts tells you not to peek in. Well, I probably shouldn't have gone this way. Your mind urging you to continue forward. Time is running out, but your curiosity gets the best of you. Approaching the cell door, you stop dead in your tracks. Mouth agape in horror. A prisoner wearing tattered clothes writhes in the grips of some insanity. Screaming and slashing at his flesh, the skin is taut over a network of dark veins that are slowly dispersing black sap through his body. That sounds terrible. Look at this guy. It says here, you are familiar enough with the affliction to know the uh, affliction caused by the spines of the blood flower to know that this poor devil is done for. All it would take is one push to end his agony. It's a six. The individual resists your grasp, but you get the upper hand and throw him into the void. Take a 151 card, discard this. Oh boy. All right. So I could choose this. It's a six. Oh my gosh. I think I have a plan. We're going to have Den take on this particular action, and she's going to use her flail as part of the action, which means I have to, I can draw two less. So I'm only drawing four cards because of the flail. It gives me negative two. Then on top of that, I'm probably going to use my anticipation, but we have to draw four cards first. We have gotten a total, I'm sure, of one success. Yes, we do. I don't get to keep any of these, but I do get this. I am going to play my anticipation that during the consequence step, I get to shuffle two cards back into my action deck. And I'm going to choose this one and this one. These two because they're just straight successes, and that sounds fantastic. So we're going to shuffle those back in, which does give me a little bit of advantage because I know I only have a total of three, six cards, seven cards, if I can count right. And now I know two of them are going to be just straight successes, which is going to be sweet. At this point, I'm going to discard this I have to roll now to see if my flail stays with us. My flail does stay with us. We'll put that back in our group. And we have knocked him down, and we're going to discard this and gain a 151 card. There is only 151 card, and it says here, you are unleashed. At any time, you may choose to return this, and you can get really exhausted. Also, I can, any action, I can use this to gain three strength things and ignore unsettling. Then I am going to return this. That's a temporary blessing, and I have two of them. I think I only have one. No, I don't have any other blessing cards or anything like that. So we'll put that with her as well. That, again, does not cost any of our, uh, it doesn't have any of our weight on it so we can carry that one and that is all we have over there where we stand the only place to go is down we've pretty much covered everything else of course we missed out on some of the stuff in here i think because we well the whole thing collapsed on us but that's okay we're gonna head down this way den's gonna take the move action we're gonna gain a card let's see what card we have we have intuition i can look at the top three cards of my action deck put them back in any back either on top or the bottom of in any order, and then I block this. I get to keep that card because I do only have one card in that second wind in her hand. So that's the end of her turn. We'll move Brooks down. Brooks doesn't have to pay any cards because he's moving into a space where somebody is, and there isn't any negatives to moving out of that space. But I do have to discard two cards. We're just going to throw these two into the discard pile, drop your guard, and parry. That's too bad. There are a couple things we can do. We can greet somebody here. But once we get on this tile, we do have to perform that action. Action. And I should have done this before I moved Brooks. So we're going to take a 24 card and see what befalls our heroes here. I should say Den. Den is going to be the one that's going to be doing this. I, I'm not going to be doing this with him because this person was still on this square before this when the card was played. Large sections of the staircase has collapsed and anyone hoping to reach the stairs leading down will now have to leap across a gap chasm. The task seems as difficult as it is dangerous given the broken disjointed corpses you see lying below oh my gosh <laughs> this is gonna be awesome all right here we are oh boy okay i need to get two uh i can draw two cards i need two successes at that point i land uh, gracefully over here and, uh, the other one is that you land on the other side 
uh, you hear a terrible cracking sound. So you lose three life, and I'm going to get a O3 card. I'm sure that's not a good, I think that's going to be an O bad card. And then I still get to put 41 over here. So at some point, I'm going to have to jump this gap. But first, let's greet these people. We'll pull card 27. There is a gold one behind this. Several prisoners jostle each other in confusion on the landing where just moments ago there was the only staircase leading down to the garden level. Let's see what this says. We're doomed. We're worse off than that weasel in the field on the carny flowers. Shut up, Liam. You are as cowardly as you are ugly. Have you seen that's left of maidens? He was an arm's length from making it an arm's length. Okay, that's fantastic. I can talk to these guys. I can banish this and read 10. I'm never going to put it down. I am going to take the talk action. Uh, and by this time, I've moved my other character down at this point. I'm going to banish that card. And we are going to read number 10. And I'm going to have Dem do that. You stand in the middle of the group to make sure everyone can hear you. So at this point, I could be authoritative, diplomatic, or a jokester. Okay, so not a jokester. Den did take more of the leadership type stuff, so I'm going to go with more of a diplomatic action here and say, don't you think it would be wise to get out of here before the ceiling falls down on us? And at this point, I will read number 157. The largest prisoner, a man by the name of Thorm, throws you a doubtful glance. You're a funny one, are you are. Have you seen how far you'd have to jump? You'll finish in a broken pile, just like Mainz. Take a look if you aren't scared of heights. He points down to the disjointed body lying below. Liam interrupts in a panic. Th Thorm is right. There's no chance we'll make it. We're all gonna die in here. You are positive that you would stand a better chance if someone else was already on the other side of the chasm to catch you. Looking around, you quickly spot two gardeners whose size and bulk make them ideal candidates for this mission. Now you just ha need to convince them to jump. Your job would certainly be a much easier if Liam stopped demoralizing everyone with his constant whining. At this point, I have to decide if I want to reason with them, and I'll read 03. Intimidate them, read 11. Bribe them. You may not choose this option unless an involved character discards one card of the keyword provisions. Read 14. I do not have any provisions at all. I ate the only provisions I was at. <sighs> that centipede. <sighs> all right. We're going to reason with them, I think. I'm not going to intimidate them. them. Them doesn't look like a very intimidating person. We're going to go with reason. Read 3. Listen to me. We don't have much time. I'm begging you. The whole floor is about to collapse. You're scared of dying if you jump? Are you serious? If you keep wasting time, I can guarantee you'll never get out of here. Our best chance is if the two of you get to the other side, ready to catch us. So I have to do a, I'm going to guess that's a convince action. Uh, it's a, lock, a chained action. I have two, I have to draw two cards. I can only keep two cards and I need two successes in order to get the uh, better of the consequences here. Now, I might not be able to do this, but here's what I'm going to do. That is an action that everybody has to perform on the area. The active player on the train card must be get involved. Uh, it doesn't say that it must be happening right now. So what I'm going to do is do this first. I'm going to do intuition. We're going to do intuition and look at the top three cards, the action deck, put them back in any order, and then block this card. So we're going to block that one as well. Look at the top three cards of our deck and see what we have. We have a, oh my gosh, this is amazing. All right, we are going to put this one, I'm going to put this one on the bottom of the action deck, but I'm going to keep these two on top. That'd be awesome. Now, I am going to draw my two cards. I know what they are. They are two successes, and they're going to be the two successes I needed in order to get across or to convince these people that they need to jump across this gap before me. So that was fantastic. That was out of control. That was bonkers good. I was super worried about that because there aren't very many cards in that deck that are going to just give you straight successes. So those two are going to go into the discard pile, and we're going to grab a 49 card and 50. 52. And we'll also at this point return the dialogue book. There are three of these left, so we'll give them a truffle shuffle here, and we'll draw this one. It's, a, it's another glimmer of hope. I I bet there are only five glimmer. I bet all those are glimmers of hope. Let's see here. We have two glimmers of hope right now. I'm adding my third one to this. And if you look at the bottom here, it says... Uh, anytime you may return five glimmers of hope to take a 99 card. And I can also use these on block cards. Remember, I forget about that. Uh, the other one, do I have another one in here? Hope of Reborn. Fruits of your action are beginning to be felt in the world around you and in yourself. Check one symbol on Destiny page 
of the Citadel leaflet and appliance effect block this slipping it underneath one player card. All right, so I can do that too as well with this. That's my guess. I believe I'm, I'm just going to look at these two. I know I probably shouldn't, but I believe they're all going to be just glimmers of hope. Yeah. Okay. So whenever you're asking me to take a 49 card, I don't have to mix them all up. I can just take one of them. They're all the same card. All right. The only one that's not the same is 52. 52 states, inspired by your speech, the prisoners compose themselves. There is no time for dawdling faces with a choice between waiting for death and gambling it all on survival. They have decided. Better to try and fail than to curl up and die. Selecting the two most agile members of the group, they leap across the void to the other side of the staircase. And do they make it? Let's find out. Luckily, the two land narrowly make it. Okay, luckily, the two lads narrowly make it across. You hold your breath as you watch them whisper about what to do next. After all, they could easily flee and save their own skins. Breathing a sigh of relief, you see them turn back and prepare to catch the next ones to jump, including you. Fantastic. That card goes here. And now when we make the jump, instead of two lock cards, I now have three I can use to try to do this. And I don't have anything else that's going to help me do this kind of thing. So <laughs> we'll start with her. She's going to go for it first. One, two. I'm going to just draw all the cards I have left. I've got four cards left in my action deck. I'm going to draw all four and hope we make it across. Let's see how we do. Got a half star. That ain't going to help. Half star ain't going to help. Oh, we got one and a half. And oh, no, I didn't make it. <laughs> I didn't make it. I need to get two successes. Look at this. I've only got one. And I have nothing else that's going to be able to help me. Oh, no. Den did not make the jump. All of these don't connect. Just the one. Now, I do have a lot of these symbols here here but sadly i don't have any cards over here they're going to help me with these symbols and i don't have any items that would have helped me get across this gap either we're in hurtville here so i am going to take let's see why first i'm going to discard all of these i do make it the other side so i will put out a 41 card let's quickly look at that since uh well actually no let's go through this uh, exactly how it's supposed to go here it says as you land on the far side of the stairs you hear a terrible cracking sound just before a bolt of atrocity across this pain shoots through your body Lose three life and take a zero three card. All right, first we're going to lose three life. I'm going to go to 12. Let's see if I can go the right way. One, two, three. We are at 12 right there. Then I am going to grab a zero three card. We'll mix these up a little bit, give them a truffle shuffle, and we'll grab one number three card. We'll take that one right there. It says you have a nasty wound and are not recovering as quickly as usual. That's fantastic. It says immediately after this is revealed, if you already are injured, take a zero one card and return this. Nope. Immediately performing, immediately after performing a recovery, I have to discard two. I can attempt to heal myself, but it is a locked value of one and I need four successes. Uh, that ain't going to happen. So I'm going to keep this weakness injured card for a long time. So it looks like the only thing this is really going to do to me, though, is immediately after performing a recovery, I'm going to discard two cards. So it's not too bad to have. I don't want it, but it's not the end of the world. There could probably be a lot worse things. I do get to put out card 41 now, according to this. Here we have taking the stairs. Four at a time, you finally emerge into open air. You stare incredulously at the gaping hole that is torn in the citadel asunder. A huge heap of boulders has submerged a large portion of the sacred grove. Panic prisoners scramble about through the clouds of dust. We have a new place. A new place, but well, I don't put any exploration cards on here, though. Just two places to go. Must, one of those must give, bring us to the next place. It'll go over there. I am over on that p place there. Now this person has to make it across. But that person is got a cumbersome card. So I get to get, I get to again keep three because of this card, but I need three successes. Oofta. And again, I don't have anything that's gonna help him with his with this when he goes across. So <laughs> let's see here. We got one, two, three, four, five cards left in my in my thing. Let's use all five. What's the worst thing that can happen? We don't make it, right? We just take more injured cards. All right, let's see what we get. We've got one success. We got no success. No, this is ridiculous. Look at this. Oh my gosh. I am super glad I just grabbed all those and got them out of there. None. None of these are gonna help. I got one. One success. These are all terrible cards. I can't do anything with these. Oofta. I fell down. Oh no. <laughs> I'm going to have to discard all those cards. And then we fall down and take a 0-3 card. So let's reach in here and grab another 0-3. See what it says. We have, it's the, it says the same thing on the back, but this one is going to be, this one is also you are injured. 
Same card. All right. So now I'm injured and I'm carrying an unconscious Taya. But we both made it. Thanks to the guys. Ken. Actually, these guys didn't help us at all. <laughs> we banged into the side. We are terrible jumpers. All right. Next time we have to jump something, we just go the other direction. So at this point, Dem, Den has no cards. I am going to first use uh, Second Wind. I'm going to block this card to pull three cards back over to our action deck. So we're going to give the action deck a quick little truffle shuffle. Just give it a little shuffle there like that and put three cards back. I'm going to put them all back so it doesn't really matter because now I'm going to use my uh, health for the rest of these. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I'm going to lose seven health. Now, one thing I do want to mention, first I'm going to lose my seven health before I forget. One, two, three, oops, did I go the right way? Three, wait, what? Wait, oh, oh my gosh, I gotta figure this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have five health left. All right, not the end of the world. I got five health. Now, one thing I do wanna mention though, is there are other ways of playing the game and I'm playing on a standard difficulty. The one other way to make this either game a little more difficult, if you actually wanted that, is for every card you put over there, it costs you one life. There's an easy mode where you get three cards for every one life you give up, but we're gonna go two. I now have five health left on Den and that is it. I'm gonna also power back up Brooks. Brooks does not have any second win cards or anything. So we're, now he's got, I think, 19 cards here because he's, he's holding one in his hand. So we're going to give these a truffle shuffle, and then we're just going to pop over. Actually, I'm not going to pop them all over. I think I'm going to leave him also with about five health. So we're going to pop over one, two, three, four, five, six health worth of cards. Let's see if I did that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I'm going to bring 12 cards back over and I'm going to leave these in his discard pile and he's going to lose six health. So he's going to go down one, two, three, four, five, six. There to five health. There you go. I think I counted right. I might count in the wrong direction, but my goal was to have them both with five health. So they're both with five health now, which is perfectly good. Let's see what we can do on this card. I'm going to send Brooks over here on a mission to go see and visit. He's going to grab one card. That's what it costs in order to do that. We got our vigilance card. We'll throw it in the discard pile and we'll take card 47. Hopefully it says something nice. Here's our card. A gust blows through the breach that has cleaved the Citadel's outer wall in two. You are only a couple hundred steps away from freedom. As you quicken your pace, a broken body crashes to the floor in front of you. A gigantic tree bit bristling with skulls is on a killing spree, frantically cutting down the escape ease as they attempt to scale the rubble behind you. The cells collapse one after another, removing any possibility of retreat. Oh my, we got a giant thing here. You only, your only option is to take on this enormous clawed branches of the monstrosity standing between you and your freedom. You thought the most difficult part was behind you. Oh my gosh, this guy's probably just, he's almost worse than the other. We've got three things. All right, so put him there. We'll put our die for our actions right here. This is going to be, I need four successes. I can only keep two cards. I only keep two, six successes. Oh my gosh, it's going to be out of control. And this is going to be really, really bad real fast. Okay, before we do that though, I'm going to have Dem go check this out. I'm going to use one of her action cards to take a look. So oh, the action card was spare no effort in case anybody's keeping track. I've got a 38. We'll put they'll grab card 38 and see what we have found. It says for us, you turn toward the garden where you yesterday were, were laboring to harvest Omnicura sap. You cautiously make your way forward and notice a clear, clearly distorted vault bush staggering about. These creatures are generally only seen in the Necrodrude's chambers. They, they are tasked with protecting certain precious artifacts. This specimen seems to have been badly damaged by the falling rocks, given its contents strewn about no, all over the place. Here, let's see what this thing says. The vault bush is set upon by a swarm of aggressive birds that must have smelled something tantalizing in the treasure trove. It retaliates by firing off a volley of deadly spines. You might be able to take advantage of the diversion and to seize something of value. Woofta. You sneak toward a forward without drawing the creature's attention. I could do this. Okay. Let's see here. I just need to do that. All right. All right. Um, I need three. Okay. We'll put this up here. I need three successes. I'm just going to move these down a little bit so they're in 
focus, but they're a little bit off kilter from that, but that's okay. At least we get an idea of what we're dealing with here. We have, we need three, draw three cards and need three successes. Oh, I did forget something. When we, we did our recovery action, I was supposed to discard two cards. So these are the cards I am discarding. These are from Brooks and these are from Den. I forgot to do that. So let's we'll put those back and discard them. But I do want to try to get this. Here's my dilemma. If I want to get this, it's probably going to cost me some cards and potentially health. And I'm more worried about the health because I only have five on each of my characters. If you look at this giant tree of death here, something that like a poltergeist or something, I'm going to have to take damage if I fail or even if I succeed eventually. Oofta. Okay, so I think we're going to bypass that. We're going to come over here and Den is going to give this her best shot. She is going to attack. I've got an axe. We're going to gear up with our axe, which I, if I get two of these, I can add two successes or... I can give myself an extra chain, meaning I can keep three cards. We're going to draw four cards because i got a long ways to go to only take this guy out. We're going to take four cards. We've done our gear up step. Let's see what our draw cards get. We got we got a half star on each side. We got we got one and a half stars. Okay, this is good. I've got two so far that I can keep. Now I only can keep I have I can only keep th uh, three of these cards unless of course I get more fists. But I don't look I'm getting fists. Oh, I got another one. Oh, well, that had star didn't help at all. But I got one, two, three. Okay, I got three. That's gonna bring this down to one. That's actually pretty good. I think that's about all I can do, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I got three. Dan, sadly, I did not beat it in one shot. So I am going to have to take two life. So I'm down to three. Oof, da. This is going to get really close here really fast here. I'm down to three life. And I do get to keep one of these cards. So that might benefit us. Let's see what one of these I might want to try to keep. Also, I have to roll during the consequence step to see if I get to keep my axe. I do get to keep my axe. I got a four on my axe. That's absolutely awesome. I'm going to choose to keep Anticipation, which can put two cards back into my deck and hopefully keep me alive. So at this point, I am going to have Dem do that again, but I'm not going to use the axe. I am going to grab two cards, and hopefully two is going to be enough to get the one success that I need. Or should I take three? Because if I get two of those ones on the wrong side, I'm not a fan of half successes, I'll tell you that. I'm going to take one more. We're going to go three cards on this one. All right, that's going to be our plan. Let's see how we do. Come on. I've got one, I got one, two, oh, look at this. I got, I got two right there. And I got another one on the double. All right, we do get to keep one of these maybe? Yes, I do. So we're going to drop this down to a six. We did get the best success, but look at this, six. I need six successes now. Oofta. I'm just going to go back over there. All right, let's see which one of these I get to keep. I can check them out and see which one's the best. I have decided to keep Jack of all trades. I'm going to discard the other two because I can use that with my axe to be two uh, two punches to give myself two automatic successes, which is going to be awesome. I think that's going to be the best bet for this. Now, at this point, I'm going to have Den continue because with that axe, she can do a lot. No, I need to save her stuff for this. I really want to take this out in one shot because I do not want to 102 cards or lose three cards. I just want to boom, beat this thing in one shot. So I want to save the axe for that. So I think it's time for Brooks to come in and start doing some work. Brooke, Brooks has the hoe. The hoe is going to give him one auto success. And then he can draw cards and then keep another two cards. Now, I could pass the axe over to Brooks if I wanted to. Oh, I think I might do that. I might do that. I'm gonna, we're going to risk it. I am going to pass the axe over there. You can give cards to anybody in that's on the same tile as you are. Now that gives him three, four, five, six, and he can have a max capacity of seven. So he's still doing okay. So I am going to give him the axe. He's going to draw four cards or three cards. Let's go with three cards. I get to, nope, let's draw four. Let's draw four cards. He needs two successes on the, or he needs as many successes as he can get. He can only keep two of these cards or three if I decide to go with that. So let's see what we got. We have ourselves one, two cards here. Oh, this is three cards. I need to keep three cards. I can get, okay, here's the deal. I can do, I can do none or you can, no, I can do at least one, right? Yeah, there's one success right there. If I keep one, these two cards, I can do one, one success. Then I could use these to to give myself the extra two from this. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do one, two, three. So that's going to bring this down to a three, which is not bad. I do have to discard all of these. No, I get to keep one because I have to do the, the worst consequence here. So I get to keep one. I do have to discard two cards from my deck. 
That's just going to go right into the discard pile. The one of the fists I really wanted. And this anticipation is so good. Look how many potential stars are on that card. Uh, but I do get to keep one of these, which could help. I'm going to keep drop your guard because I can give myself an extra chain on that. I'm going to discard all of those cards. Now I have to roll to see if we get to keep that axe. We got to keep the axe. The axe is absolutely amazing. <laughs> We're just passing this axe back and forth. That's pretty awesome. He's going to go in for the kill and see if he can take this thing out with the axe. He's going to try to go for the, Oh, maybe I should keep him for the last final blow. Because if I can keep, if, look at this. So here's the deal. If I can keep him for the last blow, I can play this, which will give me an extra chain. So I can give myself two, two cards that I could keep since it's an attack action. Also, since it's an attack action, I can give myself this extra uh, fist. And if one of the cards I keep has a fist, that'd be one, two. And then potentially I could keep two more cards. Give me three, four. Hopefully it's enough to take it out. But that means... Dem's in charge of the rest of the attacks on this. So I'm going to give this card back. I'm going to give the hoe over to Den. I'm going to keep that axe for the final blow. Den is going to come in with the hoe to try to take this tree out, at least this, this second part of it, and see how it goes. Oh, but if I use the axe, I could probably take this thing out in one shot. Oofta. This is tough. Um, nope, we're just going to go with what we got. I think that's going to be the plan. Uh, yep. We'll draw three cards. Hope we get some good ones, or should I draw four? I think I'll draw four cards, and I get to keep two of these. All right, we get to keep two of these. Here we go. Let's hopefully get some good ones here. I got, oh, I got one of the, oh, we go. Look at this. One, two, three. I got my three successes. I've got one, two, three successes right there. I can discard, oh, I got one here, two right there, three. I got threes in multiple ways. We'll discard all these cards. I don't get to keep, oh, I do get to keep one. I get to keep one. Oh, no, I, I don't get to keep one, because <laughs> we did the three. So it's going to bring us down to four down here. So I did get enough to destroy this, but I don't get to keep any of the cards. But I am going to play Anticipation, which says, During the consequence step, shuffle up to two cards you have already revealed back into your action deck instead of discarding them. I'm going to put Consider back in there, and I'm going to put Vigilance back in there, mainly because both of them have straight stars sitting right there. We only have four or five cards in our pile here, which is absolutely hilarious. So there's a good chance that I'm going to draw two successes out of that. I'm going to discard all the rest of the these cards and I think that's going to be about it. I do have jack of all trades sitting over there, but I don't need it. I'm going to roll to see if I get to keep my hoe. I do not. My hoe broke. No, my hoe broke. It says discard consequence roll of one or two. Discard this card. This card goes into the past. Okay, here we go. Last one. Brooks is going to come in. Brooks is going to pretty much play everything he's got. He's going to take that axe and he's going to hit something with it really good. Let's see what he can do. He's got one, two, three cards left. I'm just going to grab all three and see if it's going to be enough. I wonder if I should try to get some cards back into my action deck and hopefully get enough in there. Three is not going to do it. Sure. I'm going to take two more damage or one more, two more damage. One, two, bringing myself down to three health. Oh, that reminds me. I, since I won, I was supposed to take two damage. I go down to one health with, with a den here. Oofta. Okay. We got three though on Brooks. Brooks is going to take four cards from this deck, put them back into his action deck. That way it gives him a little bit more he can pull from. He's probably going to pull them all just to hopefully get this done in one shot. Otherwise, I'm going to have to have Dem do it. And hopefully this is it. Hopefully there's nothing else going on because if there isn't, we're super dead. All right, whoops, I just pulled them all back over. All right, shift them up a little bit, and now I can take four. One, two, three, four. Put them back in the action deck. Now I'm going to take my action deck, and I'm going to shuffle that up. Boom, 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 just like that. Perfect. We'll put that back. Now we're going to see. Let's see if, just let's take a look how many fists we have in here. Not too many. Okay. I think there's a lot of fists still left in our action deck there, which is going to be good because I'm going to try to get these two successes with this and then two successes, hopefully with, uh, with the other cards I have. So we're going to play this card. It's going to be able during the consequence step, you may have not, you may not apply shields. Totally fine. I don't have any way of getting shields, but I get to add an extra to the chain. So we're going to draw one, two, three, four, five cards. Why not? Leave myself a two in case I need to get somewhere. Five cards. Let's see what we get. We got one. Fantastic. We got two right here. Look at this. One, two card. Two, two stars right there. We got lots of stars here. Okay. We also got this. That's the key right here. I want to keep these two cards. These are the two cards I'm going to keep in my chain. I get one from here and I get one from this card. So that gives me a total of two cards I can keep. Those are my two cards I'm keeping. The rest of these can all go away, which is totally fine. So we have two successes. I'm then going to play this, which is going to give me my two fists that I can use to activate my axe to give myself two successes. So we have four successes in one boom. We boomed him. We boomed the poltergeist tree and killed it. 
which is fantastic. I'm going to discard these. I don't get to keep any of them. Nope. I have two cards left in his action deck. And I've got, oh boy, what, how many? I think i got about six over in Dens. I get to see if the axe comes with me. My axe does come with me. That's fantastic. Brooks kills this tree with an unconscious tie over his shoulder. Fantastic. We get to read number 40 at this point. And I'll put our characters back over here and see what happens. I'll put my dice away. That was awesome. Okay. Super digging these things. These are a ton of fun. Way cooler than anything they had in the seventh con when it comes to like having to deal with animals and stuff. It was usually just a big test and that was it. This is cool that you have to like give the dice and you got to flip them and try to do all this stuff. Oh, super glad they, that they have that in the game. Let's read 40. The tree recoils, folding up its long, gnarled branches into a sort of protective cocoon. You hesitate for a precious second, fearing a rush, but the abomination remains immobile. You are certain you have defeated it. Hurrah! The survivors cheer you, raising their makeshift weapons and fists in support. Hurrah! With one last effort, you clamber up the mound for rubble that stands between you and escape. At this point, we're going to discard all the cards on the board. We'll open the introductory scenario entitled A New Beginning, where the bookmark is. So one thing I didn't talk about during the setup is that the part I read to you, after that, it does say to put the bookmark in there, not to read any farther. And I'll show you where that is in the book in just a second. At this point, then we'll read the epilogue to the end scenario. We'll return the dialogue book. But before we do, there's a neat little drawing here of a skull with a bunch of stuff coming out of it. Some of it looks kind of like toilet paper. I don't know what that all is hanging from it. And bones and things like that. It's absolutely awesome. Okay, so super happy times. So when we did the setup, this was the very last part of it. It did say stop reading now and place the bookmark here. When the game prompts you to read the epilogue below, read it re after removing the bookmark. And the game does come with a cool bookmark of the set of Citadel, so you know where you are inside these books. Now, of course, this is just like one, almost like, it's almost like, what, 10 pages total? But some of the other... Uh, Threats are actually a lot bigger, so they have a lot more pages to them, so which is why you're going to be needing the bookmark so you know exactly where you are. And again, there's our picture of our friend. At this point, we're not going to be able to take any more actions until the game invites me to do so. And it says, You emerge from the ruins of the Citadel, leading a small group of haggard survivors. For the first time in a long, as you can remember, you are able to see across the desolate land stretching beyond the wall of the Citadel. Behind you, your cell collapses with a deafening crash. Dust and ghost white, the last of the prisoners, emerge from the Citadel. You have no idea what awaits you in the world before you. But whatever it is, you will face it in freedom. Over the last few hours following your escape, you have regained your strength. When you awake from sleep, a multitude of emaciated faces look at you, hopefully, as if expecting you to take charge. Each unconscious character gets one life point. What are unconscious characters? Each player returns their card with the keyword temporary or and or weakness to they return them. Okay, so I've got a temporary card. That's our blessing we never used. I probably should have at the end. I probably should have used that. I also have a weakness card. I am going to remove that. I'm going to return that card. I should say cards. And I only have a weakness card over on the uh, on, on Brooks. Brooks's card will be returned as well. At this point, we're going to discard all the cards in our hand. We're going to unblock any of the item cards or action cards we had in our blocked area. We're going to shuffle the cards from the discard pile back into the action deck. So our characters are all going to go back to their 20 card action deck. And they're going to be ready for action when we need to do so. At this point, it says... Gazing out beyond the crowd of survivors, you notice that the sky is clear. The clouds of dust that usually betray the precious actions of the burrowers seem to have disappeared. Could it be that the conflict has reached a turning point? If so, the surrounding land should be safe enough for you to explore and search for some answers. However, it would be suicide to set off without preparation or equipment. You need to get organized. Clearing your throat, you prepare to speak to the crowd, but nothing comes out. Who are you to command these people? We've now reached the state of play, and we can uh, birth your community. More than 100 prisoners managed to escape from the Citadel. We're going to take the blank Citadel leaflet on the community page, name your community, and write down the name of each player taking part in the adventure. Ah, this is where I am going to need your help. We need to make a community. Come on, give me some names. What the heck? <laughs> 
<laughs> see if we can find some good ones. And like I said, in the future, Colin and I will probably play this together and we'll be able to experience one of the threats together. Or if not, I'll be jumping back into this anyway. So we need that community. We'll continue on. It says save lives. If you have objective card with the objective number two, return it and read 33, otherwise read 22. Let's see if we have that. From what I understand, I do not have that. If I do, please let me know. Uh, so we'll be reading 22, and I'm gonna go through all these really quick, and then we'll go through and read all these. It says if you have the Walda card, I don't have anything about to do with Walda, I don't even know what that is. Uh, so we're not gonna do that one. If you have, if your character has the unconscious Taya, Taya card, uh, return it and read 12. That I can do. Otherwise, as provided you haven't already banished the tie card, banish it. Okay. Uh, from the past or adventure deck without revealing it. Oh, because the whole tower collapsed. That's pretty funny. Okay, so yeah, I do have that one. So we're going to read, so far we're reading 12 and 22, The Prisoner. If this is available, banish 439 card from the adventuring deck without revealing it. I do don't if it's available it is not available i discarded that card so i don't have to i don't think i banish it because i discarded it so unless i'm wrong please let me know otherwise i will banish that from the deck if i do if i need adventuring deck if i need to uh rotko if you have an objective card with the objective number one return it and read it i got nothing here wow i did terrible all right so i got two things i got save lives no i didn't get save lives the only thing i did was we carried around this lady the whole time <laughs> and i did nothing else okay so we're gonna read 12 and 22 Taya gradually comes to she sits up with a grimace but it does not seem to recognize you by chintia what what happened? She stammers as she sees the gutted husk of the citadel. The shock is so great that you fear for a moment that she will faint again. You gently pat her head as you tell her of your recent adventures. From your manic escape through the collapsing building to your epic confrontation with a frantic tree. If I understand properly, then I owe you my life and my freedom she says in a faltering voice. As if to change the subject, she calls out to a gardener she knows. Hey, Bailey, how many survivors are there? Without even giving her a time to respond, Taya grabs Bailey by the arm and begins assessing the group's chance of survival. Taya is esteemed by all and will be a valuable asset when the time comes. I do get plus one onto our sheet, and that is going to give us more influence. We're going to take two 99 cards, all right? We'll grab two of those. Hopefully those are pretty good. I don't see why they wouldn't be. We've got one here. It is going to be a Hope Reborn, and we'll grab the other one. And I bet these are all the same things. They're all Hope Reborn. It's like the experience cards in the uh, original game, Seventh Continent. All right, so we have three of those. A group of prisoners lifts you up and carries you in triumph. You have saved many lives by defeating the tree. Not only will the prisoners sing your epic tale, but they will be invaluable in helping you set up a camp on the outskirts of the Citadel. So we get to add plus one to our production and plus one to our defense. And I get another one of those hope cards. We now have four of them, and at this point, I will return the dialogue book. One season has passed. Under destroyed canvases piled up against the rampart and in the gutted alcoves, the survivors approach their breaking point, torn apart by tension and hunger. You have no choice but to present them with a project full of promise, something to occupy their hands and minds, and above all, fill their bellies. With the help of a couple of bollocks and a cart that survived the collapse, you are able to gather the materials needed to set up a makeshift camp right in the middle of the sacred grove. You begin planting a vegetable garden and soon provides an abundance of fruit and vegetables. What sweet irony, as the necrodruids had forbidden their consumption. Sowing, building, and not a day passes without you and your people being consumed by this vast undertaking. Little by little, hope is reborn. I get two more in my production, and I get to check two boxes of the, oh, check two boxes of the production track, 
on the community page in the Citadel leaflet. Check two boxes on the buildings page of the Citadel leaflet, and I get two more of those hope cards. Here's our community book. It says right up here, we can even put a picture if we want to, I'm like a meet me at the table picture. Uh, then we can put the name of our community, the players taking on part in this adventure, the threat that's being played, and here it shows what we have. Uh, they're not, it's, I guess it's kind of hard to see on camera, but I have uh, influence the defense and our three production already. We also get two points to put towards our building, and once a building has reached its final point, it is automatically built and ready to go. The ones we have options for could be something like the Watchtower or the Gallows, which would give us one towards those particular resources of our settlement. The other things we could do is we could put two into some of these other parts of the, uh, the civilization here, I guess you could say. This is super cool. I'm a huge fan of civilization-type builders inside of my adventure games. I think it's super fun because you can take your people and do different things and make a whole group of things. I think that's one reason I like Kingdom Death so much, is it has that whole settlement aspect to it. So I have to figure out which one we're going to do. As you can see, there's like an apothecary. So during the preparation phase, if you're at the Citadel, I can take a 249 card, which is a potion. It tells you kind of what the card is. The other one we could do is we get a glimmer of hope if when we leave uh, or prepare here at the Citadel. The Smithy, we could get a 190 card, which is a Gladius. I don't know why you wouldn't want a Gladius. It almost seems like a no-brainer here to take this one. But anyway, I'm going to consult some of the people. Maybe my patrons can help me decide what we're going to make. Or if you have any ideas, please leave them in the comments below as to what you think would great buildings would may be for our original settlement when we start out here. At the end of another day's work, you contemplate what has been accomplished, what you have accomplished. The dwellings extend well beyond the citadel's walls. Soon the common room will be filled with lively conversations and laughter. All of this in a less than a cycle. At the last rays of sunshine disappear, you have it to face the reality that in spite of all you have achieved and the lives that you have saved, this is a tenacious victory. Living like this by scavenging the remains of your former prison is not sustainable, but does not displease those held captive for too long to ever fully embrace freedom again. Your meager resources no longer meet the needs of your ever-expanding community, swollen by births and the arrival of too many refugees who lost house and home in the reversal. One morning, Walton arrives at your tent with a broad smile. We found some ground shivers in the ruins of the citadel. They'll enable us to venture into the collapsing lands. And if you give me time, I think I can even make some more. In the glossary section on page two and three of the dialogue book, you can read information about burrows, the reversal, and ground shivers. We'll take a look at those after we finish here. If, so that way, if you're interested in learning more about Seven Citadel, you have that option. But I'm not going to interrupt what we're doing right here, but it will be at the end. Since you escape, you have kept watch on the horizon, wondering about the reason for such upheavals, pondering what lies beyond, and what might emerge. You are drawn to the buildings standing out at nightfall, and to the tiny lights shimmering in the depths of the night. There is life out there, a world to be discovered and lifted from the rubble. Once again, you have provided the initiative by sending a small group of volunteers to scout the surrounding area. Your responsibilities in the camp forbid you from exposing yourself unnecessarily for now. I'm going to take card 25. This card states, the scouts return after a few days bearing interesting news. Flip this, slip it into the slot located in row B, column three of the world map, and then read the dialogue whose number can be seen on the top left-hand corner of the card. All right, let's take a look. Let's flip it over. We'll put it in the map in just a second. So here's a picture of this card. This is going to be, kind of, from what I understand, it, these are going to kind of be starting points for when you decide to go out on some of your adventures and it might give you some ideas as to what's around and from which direction you would go to find these particular things. Like we have a strange slab here. We have a the citadel is right here. This is where apparently we live right now. We have a crevasse over here. We have a great sea over here. And then these are going to be future cards that we may be able to unlock as we play through the game. Here's the world map. This is not the one we put the card in. This is the one found inside our leaflet. I just want to show you a quick overview of how big this map is. The actual map we're going to put it on is going to be a huge thing like this. So we're just going to zoom into the certain section that is going to be able to expose the part of the map that we're replacing that card in. But I just wanted to give you an overview of how big this world is. 
It's going to slide right in here, and I am not too thrilled with this uh, at, at the most right now. Um, this seems like this is going to be very bad for the card if it slides in here. Uh, it can stay sleeved in here, but I need to figure out a way to keep this from, like, I don't like it has so many bends in it, uh, but I'll have to work on that. But the card's going to slip in there, and so when it goes past us to start where we want to start, we could start in this particular spot. We know what's kind of around in this area. And moving forward, as as we venture out, we may find the card that goes here or the card that goes here, and even some of the ones up in this area. Who knows? We'll see how it all transpires as we move into the threats that we're going to play. Here's the dialogue that goes along with that card. We were careful, and we all came back unscathed. The ground shivers you gave us helped us avoid some rare burrowers by alerting us of their presence. Here is our citadel. We found traces of an ancient battle a little further south. Perhaps there is something there that we can recover to improve our defenses. An impassable crevasse cuts us off from the north. As you can see here, the Great Sea has spread much further west. Finally, there's a strange stone slab there, but we weren't able to open it. You thank Rayleigh for his report and wish him good rest. If this is your first time reading this dialogue, which it is, I get to gain one knowledge. At this point, we'll return the dialogue book. Soon you will venture further than you have ever gone before, discovering worlds and many mysteries and sleepy secrets. At this point, you may take actions again. You must immediately take the think action on all of your Hope Reborn cards. So here's our Hope Reborn cards. These we're going to use. It says the fruits of your actions are beginning to be felt in the world around you and yourself. I get to check one symbol on the destiny page of the Citadel leaflet and apply its effect. Then I'm going to block this, slipping it underneath my player's card, very similar to the other ones that we've been blocking in the past as we try to get out of the Citadel. If you didn't think you had enough to deal with, now you have this too. <laughs> This is called the Destiny Tracker. This is going to be how you're going to level up your civilization, your characters, uh, and all and every whole bunch of other things. So the way it starts is we're going to start by having to put one node right here. So we are going to have to fill in this node. But then after that, we can use the other Hope Reborn cards to go out into the ring and start gaining some of these other things. I have a total of one, two, three, four, five of these Hope Reborn cards. So the four that we haven't used yet, we used one for this part right here. We have to choose where we want to go. I could either get reflex actions. I could increase my production levels of those four different uh, elements that we have. We had like defense, we had production, things of that nature. I can increase those with this. I can add to all the different buildings. I can add building uh, dots on the building track so I can build other buildings. Other things we can do is remove cards from our hand if we ever get to that spot. This is going to allow us to explore more of the world and get some more of those cards out on that map. Also, we could just get some cards. We have no idea what these cards are, but we can just get them. Why not? I think that's about all that's on here. I don't think there's any other ones, but I have to decide which way I want to go. Do I want to go one, two, three, four, and get three of these and one set of new, or two sets of new skill cards? Or do I want to go this way, gain three reflex cards and a new card? I, I don't know. Or do I want to get more of the uh, values of my production lines that I have on my Citadel sheet? There's so many different ways to go. Again, maybe you could tell me what you think might be a good idea to do in this in the comments section of this video, and I can take a read of them and decide if any of those are a great idea. Probably you're gonna anybody in the comment section is probably gonna have a better idea than something I would do. <laughs> guarantee it. So that is where we stand with the Destiny Tracker. That is also the end. I just wanted to show you a little bit about that. Congratulations, you have completed the introductory scenario of the Seventh Citadel. If you wish to start a new threat immediately, return all the cards in the past, then choose an available threat booklet and write its title down on the community page of the Citadel leaflet. Return this introductory scenario. If you prefer to continue later, choose the, an available threat booklet, write down its title down on the community page of the Citadel leaflet and place it, the bookmark in the beginning of the first scenario. Take a 07 card and return this introductory scenario. Here are the three different threats that are presented to us that we can choose to start exploring when we decide to play the game. Now, going forward with this game, like I said previously, Colin and I play games live together and we have an absolute blast doing it. We're considering doing this one as one of the next live plays, but we've also decided to do Primal first. So we're gonna be playing all through Primal, which is probably gonna take about 10 weeks to get through, that's my guess. And then after that, we'll be starting the Seven Citadel unless something else pops up that catches our interest and really makes it exciting for us. And if that's the case, I will take on 
on one of these threats. And if you're interested in telling me which one you want to see, please, again, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see if I can make that a reality. But for now, I'm going to take card seven. On the back, it says, take card eight without flipping it and place it on top of the pile comprising from the top to bottom all of our cards and then for each character, the character card and with their blocked cards underneath it, we don't have any, the save action card deck with all the cards in their action deck underneath it, the save discard pile with all their cards on the discard pile underneath it, and then all of their items. Place the pile of cards behind the save divider in the game box and then I'm going to return this. So so we're going to take our characters and kind of get them ready for the next game. So here is our characters all set for the save procedure here. We're going to grab a 08 card out and it says here when you resume the game flip this. So we're going to put this uh, in right here on top of Dem. Dem does have the, her card, then her saved action deck. We don't have any discard pile and then I have my items here. Then the same we've done with Brooks. We're going to pile him up there. We'll put this right on the save file inside our box so it's all set to go. On top of that I do have these items left that I'm going to put into my quest thing here. Now I do have a cool quest book that I got with the game and off camera I'm probably going to place them into this cool looking book right here so that I can keep them all with me right there. I am going to uh, put all of my Hope Reborn cards in there as well even though I know I'm supposed to use them. This way I don't forget how many I have and before we start out on the first thing I'll talk about how we decided to spend these for our characters. Uh, I think that's going to be about it. As promised, before we finish out this video, I'm going to read the stuff from the glossary. Here we have the burrowers. Refers to various invertebrate subterranean creatures that seem to have no will of their own and act according to the will of the worm master. The most common is a blind worm, which is a long as two people and moves by digging tunnels that cause the ground above to collapse. The collapsing lands owe their name to the burrowers' destructive work. Here's the passage on the reversal. This unexplained event, which occurred nearly a cycle ago, was responsible for the collapse of Necrodrood Ninadarzar Citadel. Many view the reversal as an official end of the War of the Worms, which they attribute to the death of many players in the conflict. Necrodrudes on one side, Worm Masters on the other. But these are only superstitions. More pessimistic people see the reversal as a symbol lull in the conflict. And lastly, we have the passage on Ground Shiver, one of the first necrodrudic creations. During sacrilegious ceremonies, the druid Galahal of the Burning Bramble corrupted a pond lily with blood to the sound of incantations torn from the darkness. He named his creation Ground Shiver because it could detect the slightest vibrations in the environment and thus warn against the presence of burrowers by folding up its petals. The creation marked the advent of necrodruids and was the first turning point in the War of the Worms. Without a Ground Shiver, it would be risky, foolish even, to travel in certain parts of the collapsing land. Plans. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough of A New Beginning, the first introductory scenario for the Seventh Continent. I will be moving into one of the threads either with Colin or myself as time goes on, so be, please be looking out for those videos as we get closer to them. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you know when more content comes out. The Seventh Citadel will be played in one form or another on Meet Me at the Table. Super pumped for this game. This is one I've been waiting for for a long time. Huge Seventh Continent fan. Can't wait to dig into more of these threats going into the Seventh the Citadel. If you're interested in supporting the channel, the link to the Patreon is located in the description of this video. Those that have joined the Patreon are located here on the screen. Thank you so much for your patronage. It means the world to me. Uh, the perks that these people get is that they get to watch our playthroughs usually about a day or two ahead of time before they go live without commercials. On top of that, they'll get a say into how some of this game and others that we play are come to fruition. For example, I might ask them as well what threats and things we or how we should power up our characters and see what they think as as well as how what you have given suggestions for in the description of this video. So there you have it. This is only the beginning. And if you're excited to see more Seven Citadel content or anything else Colin and I have coming up next, then I need you to meet me at the table.